Good day. Welcome sa third day ng ating webinar series entitled Empowering Educators Through ICT. Uh, that is brought to you by the College of Information and Communications Technology, Bulacan State University. Para sa topic natin today, we're going to uh, we're going to tackle in about engaging the learners through interactive quizzes. So I am one of your speaker, Mr. Gabriel M. Galang, and let us continue. But before before we start, uh, let us review uh, kung ano yung na topic na sa mga unang araw ng ating uh, webinars. So nung day one at day two, diniscuss ni Ms. Lilabet Antonio and Mr. Aaron Paul De La Rosa yung topic about sa uh, GIS. Okay. Uh, to be specific, si Ma'am Beth dinis diniscuss niya yung about sa Google Mail, Google Docs, Sheets, Slides, and Form. While si Sir Aaron naman ay diniscuss niya ang Google Drive and Google Classroom. Okay. So before we start, there are some reminders. Um, for the certificate, ang magkakaroon lang ng certificate is yung makakapag-accomplish ng feedback form natin. So uh, kadalasan tinatanong saan ba makita yung feedback form. So isishare namin yung feedback form dun sa uh, description section ng ating uh, YouTube video. Okay? Then yung certificate will be available on June 22, 2020. Uh, may, may babaguhin lang ako. Ayan. Next is the question and answer. Due to time limit, uh, you may send your questions through our email address. Then we will go to answer that. So hindi na namin lalagyan ng question and answer dito dahil magiging mahabang ating webinar today. So, so also, uh, to connect with us, uh, pag nag-post kayo, make sure that, that you will going to use our uh, hashtag empowered by CICP. You can also use Sorbulsu and CICP Pythons sa ating additional hashtag. And then, lastly, kung medyo naiiwan tayo sa magiging tutorial natin or webinars natin ngayon, don't worry. Yung webinar na to is recorded and automatically be uploaded sa Bulsu CICP's YouTube account. Kaya don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell button para ma-notify kayo sa mga darating pa nating mga uh, webinars. Okay. Without further ado, let us start our presentation. So I'll give a, an overview kung ano yung magiging topic namin lahat. Okay. So tatlo kami mag-speak mag, uh, mag sa inyo today. But for now, ako muna mauna. So ang, tati, ang ating topic is engaging the learners through interactive quizzes. So ano expect natin? I-discuss namin yung different platforms uh, to be exact, online platforms para makapag-create tayo ng mga online quizzes and test. Okay? So, kailangan na kailangan natin yan sa ating pagtuturo. Okay? Uh, to be specific, tatlo yung di-discuss ko. First is the new normal of learning assessment. Then next would be, how can we create a quiz using Google Form? And then lastly, paano tayo makapag-conduct ng recitation through board, uh, at board activity using a whiteboard app plus a meeting application. Uh, but take note sa last part namin siya i-discuss. So let's start now sa first topic, the new normal of learning assessment. Bago ang lahat, ano nga ba yung tinatag nating learning assessment? So in general, when we say learning assessment, ito raw yung systematic approach na kung saan ginagamit nating mga instructor para malaman natin kung natutunan ba ng studyante yung first to assess our student, we need some tools. So ano, ano nga ba yung tools na kailangan natin? So such tool is a quiz. So alam natin lahat kung ano yung quiz. So pag sinabing quiz, set of question na kung saan uh, pinapasagutan natin sa mga student para matest natin yung natutunan nila. And then similar to quiz, andyan yung test or examination, kahawig lang ng quiz pero yung test is much longer than a quiz. Kaso ang tanong, ayan, paano ba natin uh, in, pineperform ang learning assessment or paano natin siya ipeperform ngayon. So before, yung old normal natin, nagsisimula tayo sa instructor. Si instructor, gagawa ng uh, quiz paper and then i-distribute yan sa ating mga sudyante para sagutan nila. Then after nilang masagutan, okay, yan, mahappy na mga sudyante natin, ibabalik nila kay teacher yung mga test paper 
And then si teacher, iuwi yung test paper para checkan sa bahay. And then, on the next meeting nila, pwede na nating, uh, pwede nang i-distribute ni teacher yung paper sa ating mga student. Okay. Uh, ang problem is, magagawa lang natin to kapag meron tayong face-to-face -face interaction sa ating student. Tama ba? Eh, anong problem? Okay. So, ang problem natin, we are facing an, a crisis, a pandemic crisis. Okay. Enable for us to protect ourselves, we need to distance from each other. Okay. So, when we are uh, practicing social distancing, ang normal na flow ng ating educational system ay may interrupt. Yung normal na face-to-face -face is hindi na natin mapaperform properly. Pero syempre, hindi natin kailangang stop ang ating pagtuturo or ang education. So, kailangan nating mag-adapt. So, one way of adaptation is to uh, use online or online teaching. Okay. Kapag online na tayo, okay, uh, iba na ang flow ng ating learning assessment. So, paano na? So, si teacher, using uh, his or her computer or a mobile device, is going to connect to internet. By the way, record ang internet dito. Okay? Then, bakit siya kumunik sa internet? Kasi pupunta siya or gagamit siya ng isang online platforms or tools. By the way, yung online platforms or tools, iyan yung i-discuss namin today. So using the online platforms or tools, makakagawa si teacher ng online quiz. Siyempre, nakastore yun dun sa online platform. Ngayon, once na nakagawa ang teacher, yung mga students niya, okay, pwedeng share ni teacher or invite niya papunta rin sa online platform natin. Siyempre, yung students using their mobile device and uh, computer should connect to the internet para may redirect siya papunta ron sa quiz na ginawa ng ating teacher. At kapag nakakonect na sila ron, babalik na yung data from the platform and then makakapag-take na ng quiz ang ating mga student. Then after they accomplish the quiz, ayan, mahapi na ulit ang ating mga sudyante, uh, yung record ng quiz sila ay mababalik dun sa online platform. Pero ang maganda rito, uh, hindi na kailangan i-check ni teacher yung quiz. Bakit? Kasi yung online platform ang i-check to result. result. Okay. Then once na kumunik si teacher, nakuha na niya yung result at nabawasan ng kanyang trabaho. Okay. Kung natin yung first topic, now we're going to proceed sa second topic natin. So, how can we create a quiz using a Google Form? Uh, by the way, na-discuss ni Ma'am Beth nung Monday yung Google Form in details. Pero don't worry, uh, yung quiz part ay na-request ko talaga na uh, dito i-discuss sa third uh, part ng ating webinar series. So, again, hindi ko nadadaanan yung ibang basics ng Google Form kasi na-discuss na siya nung Monday. So, let's start a quiz using Google Form. So, ano yung para pumunta sa Google Form? So, dalawang paraan. Pwede natin i-type yung docs.google.com slash form. Pwede tayo magsimula sa Google Drive. So, para pumunta sa Drive, i-type natin yung drive.google and then we will be redirected sa Drive natin. Bakit ko sinasuggest na sa magsimula? Kasi kung naalala nyo, dun sa nung Monday, kap ng form, automatically may store yung form sa drive. So ang gusto natin is ma-organize natin yung mga quiz natin. So sa drive tayo magsisimula. So for example, dito, mag-click ko lang din ako ng bagong folder. Let us say, lalagyan ng quiz 1. So, magkikreate ng folder, then inside the folder, dito tayo magkikreate ngayon ng uh, form file. So, to, to create a form, just press right-click, and then dito lalabas yung more, and then you can see the form option, and then let us select the blank form. Ayan, mag-generate na. So, familiar na kayo rito, kasi nga, nung Monday. Uh, ang una nyo gagawin is to rename the form. 
So let us rename it as quiz number one. Yan. Pag narename natin yun, mapapalitan na to. And then dito may dalawang tabs. Bigyan natin. Itong tabs na to, yung nagkocontain ng questions natin. Ito yun, yung nakikita natin ngayon. Okay? And then, dito sa part na to, dito lalabas yung responses. Okay? So hopefully, na-review tayo. Sa part na to, tingnan natin dito, yung sa upper right. Ayan, hopefully, nakikita nyo. Customized team. Pwede natin baguhin yung team para maging akumaroon sa subject natin. Siyempre, hindi ko na ganong i di discuss to kasi na discuss na siya but rather mag upload na lang ako ng sarili kong header kung gusto niyo ng sarili niyong header or gumawa ng sarili niyong header tandaan niyo lang yung dimension ng image na kailangan so ang dimension niya is 1600 yung width and then 400 pixel yung height so ito yung create ko therefore i-upload ko and alam niyo na siguro yung magiging context ng aking uh, quiz pag clean ko yung done Magbabago ng team, and then I'll leave everything as default. Again, para saan ulit yung eye icon na to? Pag clinic natin to, makikita natin yung tutorial ng quiz natin. So later natin siya gagamitin. Ang isa sa pinaka-importanting icon is the settings icon or button. Pag clinic natin to, dito natin ma-organize yung ating form. By default, pag nag-create tayo ng form, as we can see, uh, isa lang siyang normal na form, which is pang survey lang siya. Eh, di ba ang gusto natin gawin is quiz. Para maging quiz siya, let us head to the settings option. Meron tatlong tabs dito. Then we can click the quizzes tabs. Pag clinic natin yung quizzes tab, we can activate the form into or we can transform the form into a quiz by uh, toggling this toggle button. So once ang toggle, quiz na siya. Ngayon, nag-activate to yung nag -activate to mga naka-disable na option na to kanina. I-discuss ko isa-isa ngayon yung settings. So, settings muna tayo lahat para dire-direcheck tayo mamaya pag-create. Dito sa part ng release of grade, I always or I suggest na lagi niyong iselect yung release the grade later for manual review. Uh, bakit? Kasi minsan pag nagpa-quiz tayo, meron tayong option na i-check yung uh, sagot ng sudyante or let us say, hindi, niya, hindi natin niya allow si Google Form na i-automatically check. Siyempre, ayaw mo namang i-release yung grade ng hindi pa naka-compute or, or hindi pa nako-compute na maayos. Then, dito sa bandang ilalim ng ating option, respondent can see ano lang makita ng sudyante. This is my suggestion again. Since isa tong quiz, I always disable or uncheck the missed questions and correct answer options. Bakit? Ano ba ginagawa ng dalawa na to? Yung missed questions kasi, kapag nagkamali sila ng sagot, makikita ng sudyante yung mali nila. Okay. Then yung correct answer, kapag tama ang sagot, malalaman na nila tama sila. Eh di ba kailangan nga nila makita yung tama mali? So kaya ko siya dinidisable para maiwasan na yung student i-share yung question or yung correct answers dun sa iba nilang classmate. So ang gagawin natin dito, once na na-check mo, dun mo lang i-release yung grade nila para makita nila, ah, dito pala ako nagkamali, ah, dito pala ako tama. Okay. So... Dun yung, yun yung setting natin sa quiz tab. Now, let us start setting dun sa general tab. Okay, marami rin options dito. I always select the collect email address para alam natin kung, or alam ng Google Form kung saan i-release yung grade for manual release. Eto. Then, dito sa require sign in. Okay. I'll always check limit response to one. Bakit? Ang ginagawa kasi nito kapag chinect mo to, uh, isang beses lang makakapagsagot ang sudyante ng quiz. Meron bang nagpa-quiz na paulit-ulit nagpasa ang sudyante? So, di ba one time lang? So, let us uh, enable that uh, option. Now, in the bottom part, yung respondent scan. Okay. I'll always leave this as unselected or uncheck yung edit after submit. Huwag nyo isa select to kasi pag sinelect nyo to, once nag-submit na ang student ng quiz, pwede nilang baguhin yung sagot nila. Di ba pag nagpa-quiz din naman kayo, hindi nyo inahaya ang uh, kuhanin pa yung paper. Ma'am, Nakita ko po kasi yung sagot sa classmate ko. Babagwin ko pa quiz ko. Di ba? Hindi naman. So, always disable this option. At the same time, i-disable ko na rin yung see summary charts kasi naka-disable naman yung show answer and incorrect answers natin. Now, let us proceed to the presentation tab. Okay. I always check show progress bar. Bakit? Ito yung part na kung saan makikita na student kung nasa ang page na siya nung quiz niya. 
And then one of the best feature of Google Form is uh, inaalaw kanyang ishuffle yung question order. So sir, bakit natin kailangang ishuffle yung question order? Mahalaga to para pag na-receive ng student yung quiz nila, uh, merong, parang merong nakaset, random yung questions na marireceive nila. So again, uh, maliless natin yung cheating part. So again, let us review sa quiz tab. Dito natin in-enable yung quiz. Sa general, dito natin in-enable yung mga settings na to. And then sa presentation, in-enable natin yung progress bar and shuffle. Now, let us save our settings. So, nung sinave natin, ano yung nabago? Kung papansin ninyo, dito sa part na ito, nanghingi na siya ng email address. Bakit? Kasi nga, di ba, in-enable natin mahingi ng email address. Ano pa? Dito sa part na to, by the way, this window is, a, is the question window. Kung papansin niyo, kung napansin niyo, or kung naalala niyo sa presentation ni Ma'am Beth, wala yung option na answer key. Pero once na ginawa natin siyang quiz, magkakaroon ng answer key. Therefore, this form is a quiz already. Sa una, kapag pinamibigay niyo yung quiz niyo, di ba, gusto niyo hingin yung information ng student. So, hindi lang sa patang email address. Di ba, ang una natin hinihingi ay yung tinawag natin uh, information niya. So, by default, lagi ko hinihingi yung name. So, paano natin hihingi yung name? Uh, uh, Itutur ko lang kayo rito sa question window. Sa question window, itong part na to, dito niyo itatype yung question. Itong part na to, dito kayo magsiselect ng type of question. Then yung itong part na to, dito kayo maglalagay ng options. Okay, so huwag kayo maliligaw. And then yung part na to is pang duplicate ng question. Itong button na to, pang delete ng question. And then when we click this, this question will be required to be answered. And then, meron pa rito ang additional option, dadaanan natin later. So, for now, I'm going to change the question. Ang hihingin ko ay yung name. So, nung ginawa kong name, automatic nagpalit or nagbago ang ating uh, type of question. Bakit? Kasi nga, di ba na-mention ni Ma'am Beth, uh, matalino yung Google Form. So, ina-assume niya na, ah, name ang hinihingi rito. So, hindi ko na siya gagalawin. Okay? I'm going to do is to require this question to be answered by our student. So, hindi natin sila haya magpasa ng walang pangalan. Okay. So, yung dalawang nandito is about the information of student. Ang awkward naman kung lalagyan natin doon sa same page ng question kagat sa quiz. Kaya ang gagawin natin, we're going to add a page. Kung naalala nyo no Monday, paano mag-add ng page? We need to proceed dito sa toolbar. Sa ilalim, makikita natin yung add section. When we click that, automatically magkakaroon na next page. Then in here, Uh, let us name our page. Let us say ito yung quiz proper natin. So, quiz number one, page one. Bakit page one? Kasi dito pa lang talaga yung start ng quiz natin. Then you can add the description if you like. Okay. Now, sa, uh, sa page one, uh, we want to add a question. But how can we add a question? Kung naalala nyo rin nung Monday, dito sa toolbar, when we click this uh, circle na may plus button sa loob, makapagdagdag tayo ng question. So, I'll do that now. Ayan, nung klinik ko, nadagdag tayo ng question. Okay. So, para maka, magamit natin lahat ng question type, nag-prepare ako dito ng available questions. Okay. So, punta tayo sa question. Ayan. So, math yung tanong. Hindi ako expert in math, pero sana tama yung pinakita ang questions. So, let us say, paano natin ipapresent yung uh, question na to? So, napakadali. What is 1 plus 1? And then, pamimilian is... 1, 2, 3, and 4. Therefore, yung type ng question na yun would be a multiple choice. Tama ba? Kung so, titingnan nyo rito yung naka-read yung true, uh, correct answer. So, kinapi ko yung question, ipinase ko rito sa question input field, and then I'll change the uh, question type. By default, nasa multiple choice siya, so ito yung select ko. Okay. Next. I'll change the option kasi nga, di ba, sabi multiple choice, that may pagpipilian. So yung nandun, kung naalala ko, ang nakalagay sa options is one. Ah, okay, tinay ko si one, then automatic siyang nagsuggest. So pwede natin add all, one, two, three, four, five. Eh ang kupapansinin natin doon sa ating quiz or sample ay apat lang. So, eh sir, lumagpas tayo ng isa, ano gagawin natin? Oh, napakadali, just click the X button, right? dun sa right portion ng ating options, madidelete na yon. Also, nung Monday, may nakita ang question na, Ma'am, uh, Ma'am Beth, ilan po ba yung options na pwede? So, ang sab uh, hindi na natin nasagot yun, pero dito, I'll, I'll answer that. Kung ilan po ang gusto nyo. So, you can add 
uh, as many as you can. Ayan. So dito sa ating example, uh, apat lang options. Ano ang kulang sa settings natin? Ang kulang natin is mag-assign daw tayo kung ilang points yung question na to at also i-assign din natin kung alin dito yung correct answer. So how could we do that? To do that, just click the answer key button sa lower left portion ng each question. So I'll click this. Magbabago yung tura ng window. Ang una niyang ihingin, how many points? Okay. So how many points ang ilalagay natin? So dito, ang ilalagay ko ay one point kasi madali lang ang question. Okay. And then, what is one plus one? Ang answer ay two. Tama ba? So nung clinic natin, nagkaroon ng check. So that is two. Okay, then what we are going to do next is to click the done button. So meron na siyang points, meron na siyang answer. Kita nyo, naka-check dito. Next, ang kailangan nyo gawin is i-required yung question. Ah, by the way, nasa sinyo pala yun as instructor. Gusto ba nating naka-required yung question natin or hindi? So ako, I always ask them to require since multiple choice naman to. Okay, before we proceed, okay, Okay, before we proceed, let us zoom in our form para mas madaling basahin. Ayan. So hopefully, okay na yan. Ayan. Before we proceed, uh, we need to add more settings dito. So kung nakikita niyo yung snowman buttons dito sa ilalim, yung tatlong period, yung dot, dot, dot. Na, okay? Pag clinic natin yan, meron pang lalabas na additional options. So ni additional options natin? So yun siyempre, hindi natin kailangan lagyan ng description. So, ito, itong nakikita natin sa dulo, shuffle option order. So, ano ibig sabihin nun? Pag sinelect ko yun or inactivate ko yun, itong 1, 2, 3, 4 na to, pag tinignan ng sudyante, mararandomize. So, therefore, they will be presented with random question and also with the random options. That is to avoid uh, potential cheating. Okay? So, since merong settings itong question 1 natin, pag klinik ko yung add button, mag-uulit-ulit tayo sa paglalagay ng settings natin. Okay? Uh, okay. So let me off my camera first. Baka kasi may mga button tayo na maitago. Ay, sorry. Ayan. Okay, let's go back. Let us continue. Ayan na. Again, kung gusto nating gopyahin yung settings nito, instead of adding a new question, we could just duplicate the question. So I'll click this duplicate button and magically, ayan, maduduplicate na yung question natin. Now, let us proceed. Medyo bibilisan ko na sa part na to kasi nakapag-sample na tayo ng isang question. So, punta na tayo sa question number two. So, tingnan natin. Ano yung question number two? Three plus two is equals to five. And then, yung option ay true or false. So, paano tayo gawin true or false? So, as simple as this. Let us paste this question. Remove the possible options. And then, ang, kung imagine natin or kung alam natin, ang true or false is a multiple choice also. So, we can change the option into true then ma-detect niya na false yung kasunod. And then next step again, let's check uh, let's click the answer key. May points na siya, 1 and then I'll select the answer. 3 plus 2 is 5. True. Then I'll click done and then naka-enable na rin yung settings na ginawa natin kanina. Then let us proceed to the next type of question. What if naman ganito yung type of question? So please identify the even numbers. Ano yung naiba? Yung naiba rito, marami siyang options na pagpipilian. Pero dito, dalawa yung possible na answer. So kapag daw gusto nyo ng multiple choice, na multiple answer, ang gagamitin natin, instead of a radio button, itong circle is a radio button, we can use the checkbox. So multiple choice na naka-checkbox. Then we'll remove the options. Again, ano yung numbers na pagpipilian? 1, 3, 5, 2, 7, 8. 1, 3, 5, 2, 7, 8. And then we're going to select the answer. So, alin ang even dito? 2 and 8. Okay. Hopefully, tama yung mga nilalagay kong answer. So, then, let us proceed to the next type of question. Okay. Paano naman daw to? Ito, very easy. What is 5 plus 2? Pero dito, walang pagpipilian. So, pag ganito, identification yung type ng question. So, how can we change our question, what is 5 plus 2, into identification? To change that, we're going to select the test type and then sa upper part, makikita natin yung short answer. So when we click that, again, mababago na yung type of question. Now let us 
uh, give the answer key. So what is 5 minus 3? 5 minus 3 is 3. Baka may magtanong, Sir, what if word na 3 ang tinipe? Of course, you can add the word 3 in here as the correct answer. Then if I check this, any answer uh, na wala rito sa dalawa na to will be incorrect. And then one points lang ulit, then I'll click done. And then I'll duplicate this. Uh, take note, nag-duplicate tayo rito na wala yung options. Then dito maglalagay tayo ng options. Kapag ginawa nyo is ganun, make sure na i-enable nyo ulit yung mga settings dito sa ilalim. So paano yon? Ano ibig sabihin nun? Let us see the next question. Okay, so normal na multiple choice. What is 3 times 3? Nakalagay rito. So 3 times 3, that is multiple choice. Pero this time, papakita ko isang example ng multiple choice. So ano example niya? Pwede tayo gumamit ng drop down. Okay. So sa drop down, multiple choice din siya. Pero yung options is naka-window. So our options is 6, 8, 9, and 13. 6, 8, 9, and 13. Then let us give the answer key. 3 times 3 is 9. Then I'll click done. Again, balikan natin yung settings natin dito na disable yung shuffle option order. So enable ulit natin siya. Okay. Now let us proceed. O, konti na lang yung sample of question natin. Then matatasa tayo sa Google Form. Dito, pansinin natin, 6, 7, and 8. Pare-parehong true or false. Papansinin nyo, tatlong questions. Sa bago lang yung questions, pero yung pagpipilian, true and false. Pwede natin yung gawing tatlong questions. Or you can utilize yung isang type ng question kay Google Form. So, let us copy the question first. So, 3 plus 5 times 2 is 16. So, paano rin natin gagawin yun? So, on the option tab ng ating uh, question type, we can use multiple choice grid. Uh, by the way, sir, bakit nyo ginanyan? Kasi minsan kailangan natin maging creative sa paggawa ng questions. So, ano yung multiple choice grid? Dito, ang gagawin natin, sa row, nung multiple choice grid, dito nyo ipipaste yung specific questions per number. Yung general question dito is true or false, tama ba? True or false. Then again, sa row nyo ipipaste yung mga questions. So let us say, 8 times 2 minus 6 is equals 10. Let me copy that. And then another one. What is the last question? The true or false? 1 times 3 divided by 3 is equals to 0. Ayan. And then sa options, kung ano yung niyo options dito, iyon yung lalabas na options para sa tatlo. So for example, ano yung options natin? We have the true and the false. Then, let's check or let's add an answer key. Ano yung tura nun? So ganito yung tura nun. So question na to, ito yung pagpipilian. Yung question na to, ito yung pagpipilian. So one point lang sila lahat. So ang answer dito is false. Ito ay true. And then ito ay false. Then I'll click done. And then, tingnan natin kung may iba pang option dito. So, kung napansin nyo, iba yung option. Shuffle, row, order. Okay. And then, I'll duplicate this. Meron pa tayong isang kaibang uri ng question. What if ganito yung itsura ng question? So, ano yung napansin natin? Dito, kahawig din ng taas, which is meron question sa row, and then may pagpipilian sa column, pero this time, pwedeng multiple answer yung maging sagot. So kung naalala nyo, kapag multiple answer ang sagot, ang gagamitin natin instead of uh, instead of uh, video button, we're going to use checkbox. So we're going to uh, select checkbox grid. So I changed that to checkbox grid. Let us paste the general question based on the numbers from the row. What are the divisible numbers from the right? So ito yung numbers from the row. So 20, 16, and 18. Let me erase this. 20, 16, and 18. And then yung pagpipilian natin ay 4, 5, 10, 6, and 3. Ah, sorry, 6, 3, and 2. 4, 5. Tama ba ang aking ano? Ah, 4, 5, 10, 6, 3, and 2. 4, 5, 10, 6, 3, and 2. And 2. And then let us add an answer key. Kung tingnan natin, kung naalala ko yung sagot dito. Si 20 is divisible by 4, 5, 10, and 2. Si 16 is divisible by 4 and 2, while 18 is divisible by 6, 6, 3, and 2. Kung may maliman, ayan, ayan. Kung may maliman, uh, binibigay ko na naman yung example. So, hopefully, tama yung sagot ko. Then, check ulit natin kung may bagong option. Okay, so nakacheck na siya. Now, let us duplicate again this question. 
Ano pa yung type ng question na pwede natin ilagay? What if ganito yung question natin? So ano yung question? Yung question meron na siyang included na image. So how can we add a question with an image? So, so napakadali lang. Una ito yung question natin. What does this mathematical symbol do? Or sorry, what does this mathematical symbol mean? To add, a, uh, to add an image sa question natin, you can just click the image button dito sa right side ng question. When we click that, marami tayong option. Pwede tayong mag-upload, mag-take ng picture, uh, maglagay by URL. You can, you can use Google Photos, Google Drive, or you can search from the web. So, I'll try, uh, anong symbols nga ulit yun? Square root. So, square, uh, sorry, square root. Symbol. Ayan. And then, pag sinerge ko yun, kaya na siya like the Google search engine. Lalaban, we could select the question. O, oh, yung image, of course, ya, ilo-load niya. Make sure na i -re resize mo kasi minsan malaki yung uh, malaki. Okay. So, wait. Malaki yung high definition yung image. Kapag nandiyan na, i-click lang natin yung nasa lower right corner to resize the image. Ang sakupin yung screen ng isang question. Yan. And then, let us add the option. Hindi ko pala siya nabago ng choice. I'll change this to multiple para. Yan. Now, ano ang option natin? Kung tama pagkakaalala ko ay uh, teka ko na nga lang. Summation square root And then, we have the division. And then, lastly, we have the caret. Ayan. Anong symbols daw to? So, alam ko, alam nyo. Oh. Select the answer. And then, let's check again. Always check the option. No? For example, ito na disable option order. So, we, na we should enable this. What if man atin ay ganito? Isang question na normal text pero option ay images. Okay. So, paano natin nagkabit the text? I'll paste it in here. I'll remove this image kasi hindi na siya included dito. To remove it, just click the snowman icon then remove. So, remove din natin itong mga nandito. Ang gagawin natin, papalitan natin siya ng image. To add an image sa isang option, just simply click each button sa right side. I'll click This, tapos ulit yung Windows kanina, this time kukuhanin ko naman sa Google Drive yung mga images. So I'll click my Google Drive, will automatically uh, connect to the Google Drive, ako nakalag in, and then let's proceed to webinar folder, and then nandito yung images na gagamitin. So wait lang natin ng konti, load na. So first, and then maglalagay na ako na apat, And then, after we select the first one, we will select the second one. Okay. I'll go to Google Drive, Webinar, again, Images, and then I'll select the infinite symbol. Ayan, ma-upload ulit siya. And then, maglalagay ito ako ng bago. Okay. Folder. Ayan. I'm going to select this. And then, for the last symbol, ang, ang hinahanap natin is ito si Pi. Uh, going to search Pi symbol. Symbol. Ayan. Uh, medyo nag stutter lang ang ating connection. So, wait lang saglit. Oh, am I still connected? Ayan. Huwag tayong kakabahan pag gumagawa ng quiz. So, I'll assume na pa yung unang symbol na nandito. So, I'll select this. Okay? Kapag mabilis naman ang net natin, don't worry. Walang problem to. Hindi kasi ako nakapag-load ngayon. Joke. Okay. So, eto na yung options natin. Images. Ayan. Then, let's proceed. Yung ginagawa natin kanina, let us select the answer key. Maglo-load ulit yung mga questions. So, wait natin. Ayan. Suspense. Yung tiyong tiyong bumababa. Inilo-load niya kasi yung questions. But, I'll select the uh, correct answer which is the option 4. And I'll click done. Yan. Check ulit natin yung option ha. 
Ayan, nakashapol. Ayan na, matatas na tayo, last two. What if the question is like this? Please explain how 1 plus 2 times 3 divided by 1 is equal to 7. Ayan. So, I'll just paste this. Pag ganito yung giningin niyo sa sudyante, ina-expect natin na paragraph siya. So, therefore, what we are going to use is the paragraph option or type. So, when we click the paragraph, iba siya kay short answer. Si paragraph, pag clinic niyo yung answer key, walang, uh, walang options para maglagay. Bakit? Kasi ang paragraph manual, chinecheck ng instructor. Yun. Once na gumamit kayo ng paragraph, uh, manual niyo i-check. So for that, since mahirap mag-explain, I'll put five points. And then ito na tayo sa last question natin. For the last question, tingnan natin mabuti. Please create a spreadsheet, a spreadsheet file containing a multiplication table up to 10. So taking our student to submit a file. So kaya rin yun ang quiz natin. So how can we do that? So select the paragraph option. Then we can select the file upload option. Then ito, magtatanong si Google Drive, do you accept? Kasi raw, inaalaw mo raw ba kasi saan ba ma-upload yung upload ng student? Doon sa Google Drive ni teacher. So baka limited lang yung space natin, mapuno. Kaya tinatanong kanya. And then since na-mention natin sa question na spreadsheet file ang hinihingi natin, we can only allow specific files to be uploaded by our student. So when we toggle this, we can select spreadsheet file only. But if hindi mo naman mention kung ano, you can allow these available file types. Of course, by default, isa lang hinihingi nating file. Pero kung masipag student natin, pagpasahin natin sa po kung gusto nila. Okay? Eto, important in settings, the maximum file size. Uh, I suggest to select the default, which is 10 MB, instead of increasing the file size. Bakit? Kasi once na inalaw mo yung 10 GB, student mo ng 10 GB, mapupuno yung Google Drive mo. Okay? So I'll assume na yung spreadsheet file, hindi siya lalagpas sa 10 MB. And then, I'm going to add the answer key. Okay, meron na pala, 5 points. And that's it. Nadaanan natin halos lahat ng question type. Except dito, yung linear scale, hindi ko siya ginamit kasi uh, para siyang pang-survey talaga. And then, yung date and time, you can use this kung meron kang tanong na related sa date. For example, kailan, na, kailan yung independence date ng Pilipinas? Parang ganon. Since mat tayo, hindi na natin siya isasample. So, sir, natapos na tayo. How can we preview our quiz? Okay. Ah, by the way, gagawin pa ako sa dulo. Isa-separate ko na page yung dalawa na to. Bakit? Kung napansin nyo kasi yung dalawa na to is graded manually. Also, since paragraph to, hindi ko siya i-re-required. Hindi ko haya, ah, hindi ko re-required magsagot ng student. Also, eto, hindi ko rin siya i-re-required. So, how to add a page? Again, just click this button. Then, a page will be added. Then, this is the page. Ah, sorry, quiz number one, page two. And then kung papasinin nyo, ala yung question na dito sa taas. So how can, we, how can we move the questions sa isang page? So kung napansin nyo, pag hinover nyo sa upper part, sa middle upper part ng ating question, you can drag it down. Ayan. And then last, we can drag this down. Ayan. So hopefully naiintindihan natin kung paano gumawa ng quiz. Okay. How can we preview this? Para makita natin yung quiz, again, let us click the eye icon. So when we click this, mararedirect tayo sa part na to. By the way, ito yung perception or yung makikita perspective ng ating student. Kapag sinear nyo yung link, ito yung makikita nila. So let us try to answer the quiz. So I'll include my email address. I'll give my name. And then, eh, kung napasin nyo, merong progress bar dito kasi in enable natin kanina. I'll click next. Then, kung napasin nyo, hindi ba hindi naman ito yung first question natin kanina? but napunta dyan kasi nakarandom yung question natin? Also yung options. So, eto, hindi ko alam kung bakit siya. Baka hindi ko na-enable dito. So, I'll select this as the answer. Ayan na. Ayan. So, this is false. And then, hanggang hindi nyo natatapos yung questions, sasabihin niya, lahat daw na to ay kailangan nyo sagutan. Dahil everything in here is required. So, 5 times 2 is 10 plus 3 is 13. Therefore, this is false. And then this is true. Okay. In here, what is the even number? 2 and 8. And then dito, si 20 ay divisible by 4, by 5, by 10, at by 2. Si 16 ay divisible by 4 and by 2. 
Samantalang sa 18 ay divisible by 6, by 3, and by 2. Once na mamali ng isa yung student, of course, mamamali na siya. Okay. What is the symbol for pi? Okay, ito. Then what is 5 minus 2? 3. What is 1 plus 1? 2. What is 3 times 3? 9. And lastly, 3 plus 2 is equal to 5. True. Then I'll click next. Then dito, pag explain tayo ng ating teacher. So let us say, sabi raw, bakit doon ay equal to 7? So sabihin ko na lang, because, because M does. Ayan. So, hindi ko na-explain kasi baka humaba na natin. Alam naman natin ay M does. And then dito, I'll attach a file. So I'll click that. Then I'll click select files from devices. Nag-prepare na ako ng spreadsheet na i-upload. So this is the, my spreadsheet. So multiplication table. Then I'll upload this. Ayan. Then once na na-accomplish natin lahat ng question, we can now submit the response or the quiz. Answer sa quiz natin. Once submitted, ito ang makikita na student. Your response has been recorded. Typically, nakikita natin sa normal Google form, may nakalagay dito, dito edit response or submit another response. Kung naalala nyo, dinisable natin siya kanina. Paano pag ni-refresh ni student? Ano ang makikita niyang output? So, ang makikita niya ganito, you already responded. So, hindi na siya allowed mag-submit ulit. Okay. Then, since nakapagsagot tayo ng isa, makikita natin dito sa response na nadagdaga ng isa. Again, natakal na ito ni Ma'am Beth in detail. Pero ang pagpupukosan ko na lang dito is yung tab na individual. Sa individual, dito natin makikita yung mga submission or quiz ng ating student na sinagutan. So isa pa lang ang nagsagot sa atin, that's why i-double check natin kung tama nga ba yung mga sagot na nilagay ko. So dito nagkamali ako ng sagot. Uh, babalikan natin, papakita ko sa inyo paano i-edit. Okay? And then, hindi ko pala na-select yung tuwas ang answer, dapat tama yon. And then dito, bakit siya nakamali? Kasi manual grading to. So let us say, okay, tama ko nyari yung sagot. Then I'll add a perfect score of 5. And then let us say dito, chine ko yung upload. So is this a multiplication table? Then pagkaklik natin, okay, siguro multiplication table. Then I'll give a perfect score of 5. Then I'll click save. Again, balikan na natin yung kanina. So paano ba natin i-edit yung question? So dito yung sa question na to, dapat daw correct din si answer number 2. So balik lang tayo rito sa taas. And then I'll select the question. And then hanapin daw natin yun. And then dito yun, kung tama pagkakaalala ko, then let us add the answer key. Then I'll click this. Then the answer will be correct. Okay. Now the question is, how can we share this to our student? Ang maganda rito na napakita na si naman bet na karaan. So kung naalala, just click the send button. Kapag nakamobile kayo, ang makikita nyo ron is the airplane icon or button. Huwag kayo malilito. So pareho lang ginagawa nun. So I'll click the send button. This is uh, yung prepare way ko is yung ikakopy ko yung link. So pag clinic nyo to, copy link, you can shorten it. And then you can send it to your student. So what I'm going to do is to, uh, to answer it in different accounts. So I'll click my other account. Then kunyari ito yung student, clinic niya or finish niya, ano ang makikita niya? Okay. So ang makikita niya ito tulad nung nakita natin kanina. So let's answer this. Oh, hindi ko na pala sasagutan kasi nakapag-sample na pala tayo kanina. Pero ganun lang siya i-share sa ating student. Ngayon, what we're going to do is, or ang question is, how can we see the grades of the student? Di ba ang sabi natin, automatically na siya, na siya na-check. So to see the grades, kung naalala nyo, ano ginagawa ng button na to? So pag clinic nyo to, mag-create siya ng isang spreadsheet file doon sa Google Drive natin. So pag clinic ko, the... I'll, I'll click create. Kung pupunta tayo dun sa folder ng ginawa na. Okay. Ayan. Teka, nagbukas yung spreadsheet file. Hindi ko siya makita. May nakaharang sa screen ko. Ayan, hindi ko makita. Ayan, na, nadadrag ko naman pala siya. So, I'll open this. Ito yung spreadsheet file na generate niya. Ito yung quiz na ginawa natin and then nagkaroon ng automatic na folder dito nandito yung in-upload na file ng student natin. Okay. So, tingnan natin yung spreadsheet file na na-generate. So, ito lumabas. So, bakit ito lang? Kasi isa lang yung nagsagot. Kung titingnan natin, 23 out of 23. So, perfect yung score ng student. Kapag marami na so, makikita nyo yung kanilang grade. 
then you can review the answer in here. So hopefully naiintindihan natin yung paggawa ng quiz using Google Form. And then before I end the topic sa Google Form, I just mention that you can use or you can install add-on. Dito meron akong binanggit na add-ons, pero di ko na siya i-demonstrate. Pero sasabihin ko na lang kung ano ginagawa niya. So we have the Flubaru. Si Flubaru is an add-ons of Google Sheet na kung saan uh, kukumpute niya yung grade dun sa spreadsheet natin. Uh, kaso, uh, di ba, minsan ang kailangan lang natin is the, the total score. Kaya naman na i-provide sa atin yun. Pero kung gusto niyo yung maganda itsura niya, you can just proceed to add-ons. Kung papansin niyo naka-install na si Flubaru. If hindi pa, click niyo lang yung get add-ons. And then, dito makita niyo si Flubaru. So, ano ginagawa ng Flubaru? Ano itsura nun? Okay. Kung papansin niyo ano, ilalakihan ko lang Windows, nalalakihan ba rin? Ayan, hindi ko siya malakihan. Pero kung titingnan niyo dito sa screenshot, ayan, naka-organize yung quiz. So again, just install it. Once, once na na-install, you can just activate it and then you can just use Fluvaru. Automatic na yung ayusin. Ano pa yung isang sinasabi kong add-ons? You can use timify.me. So what is timify.me? Si timify.me is an add-ons na ini-include natin sa Google Form. Okay. Para saan siya? What if gusto nating maglagay ng timer? Di ba minsan may pa-timer tayo pag quiz? So kung gusto nyo may time yung quiz natin, you can just click the snowman icon here. And then click add -on, the add-on. Sorry. And then lalabas ulit yung kaninang windows. Then we can look for timeify. By the way, napakaraming add-ons dito. You can explore it. So ito si timeify.me. Ang ginagawa niya is naglalagay siya ng timer. So litang ko ng konti yung screen para umayos yung ating view. Ayan. I-reload ko lang ulit yun. Don't worry. Isusum ko ulit later. So, this is the timeify.me. And then, ayan, kung napansin nyo rito, yung form meron ng timer. And then, kung gusto nyo, kung i-avail yung premium feature ng timeify.me, uh, pwede nyo i-track yung nag a answer ng quiz nyo. So, mag-activate yung camera nila. Then, habang nag-quiz sila, mag-take ng snapshots yung... Uh, computer, and then isasubmit niya sa'yo. Then pag sinubmit na nila, ma-review mo, oh, may code ko bang ginagamit yung student natin? Nakatingin ba siya o may nagtuturo ba sa kanya? So, maganda solution to to avoid cheating. So, hopefully, naiintindihan natin kung paano gumawa ng quiz sa Google Form. Okay? Then, yung next topic ko, uh, later ko siya i-discuss after ni Ma'am Lorraine. But for now, uh, let us come. Uh, our next speaker, Mr. John Lemuel Salazar. So, good afternoon, everyone. I will be your second speaker for today. I'm Mr. John Emil C. Salazar. And I'll be introducing to you to another online platform where you can create online quizzes and online tests to assess or evaluate your students, which is called the Glass Marker. So, I know some of you already know or already use Glass Marker. And I think this is a very good tool um, to use in this time of pandemic. So, to give you an overview of what I'm going to discuss for today, First, we will be discussing about the registration on Glass Marker and how to make online quizzes, how to take online quizzes, how to view the results, and of course, some limitations of the Glass Marker. But now, I know you are wondering kung ano po ba yung Glass Marker na tinatawag. For the Glass Marker, it is a secure professional web-based quiz maker and an easy-to-use customizable online testing solution for business training and educational assessment with tests and quizzes graded instantly saving you hours of paperwork. Ibig sabihin po, hindi lamang po siya limited for educational assessment. Um, available din po siya for businesses, for testing solutions and trainings po. So for today, we're just going to focus for the educational purposes of the class marker. 
bakit nga po ba magandang gamitin si Class Marker? Because Class Marker has a fully functional testing environment. You can also view the graded results and selected answers instantly. You can create unlimited quizzes and questions. You can also add time limits and you can also set schedules for quizzes and tests. It has also multiple types of quizzes to choose from, such as multiple choice, matching type, true or false, and many more na mas itatakal pa po natin on the latter part of our discussion. And you can also randomize questions and create or add groups or sections. So for the demonstration of our class marker, I'll just go into open my browser. Okay. So we're just going to type the class marker, classmarker.com. Yeah. Then it will direct you to the, okay. Um, it will direct you to the homepage of the class marker. As you can see on the upper right corner, and do po yung username and password where you, uh, where you can log in. But since I'm assuming that we are all a first-time user of the class marker, so dito po tayo, we're just going to click the register for free. Okay? So once we click the register button, it will direct you to this page and you have two options. Whether you are the test taker or you are the administrator. So ano yung naman po natin pareho yan, but first let us focus on the administrator side of the class marker. Under administrator, there are two options, which is the for business use and for education use. Like what I've said earlier, we're just going to focus on the education use of the class marker. So I click ko lang po siya. Then it will direct you to the yeah, registration form of the class marker. All you have to do is to fill up all the necessary information na needed the class markers, such as the first name. So type ko lang po, for example, is John Lemuel. Then for the last name is Salazar. And for the username, so kayo naman po bahala sa username. And then it will check kung nagamit na po si username. Kapag nagamit na po, all you have to do is think of another username. Like for example, Lem C. Salazar. Then, ayan po, available na po si Lem Salazar. And for the password, all you have to do is to follow the format, which is uh, it must be at least eight characters long and combination of numbers, letters, and special characters. Let us say my password is Lemuel underscore five. Yan alam po. So, Lemuel underscore five. For the email address, it is very important kasi po magsesend po si class marker ng verification link po sa ating provided na email address. So let's say my yung Google ayun uh, yung Gmail ko na lang po jalembel.salazar at gmail.com Then for the country it's Philippines for the time zone um the nearest na nakita ko po for the time zone is Taipei Okay Then Select lang po I'm not a robot. And if you want to get emails from Class Marker about sa mga new features ni Class Marker or for some um, additional features or news about Class Marker, pwede po natin siya i-check. Pero pwede na rin pong hindi kung ayaw nyo naman po makareceive ng email from them. Then check lang po natin yung I agree. And then click the register button. As you can see, once you register, you will be directed to the home page of the class marker. It will automatically sign you in. But before we continue on the class marker, punta lang po tayo sa Gmail natin. Tingnan po natin kung nag-send po siya ng verification link. Then as you can see, ito po, nag-send po siya ng verification link. Zoom lang po natin para makita. Then all you have to do is to click the verification link. Click lang po natin siya. And then it will notify you that your email address has been verified successfully. So, naka-verify na po yung ni-register nating account. Now, going back to the sign-in uh, account, isa sa gusto ko kay Class Marker is that very user-friendly po si Class Marker. If you are a first-time user, makikita nyo meron pa po siyang tutorials. 
So yung mga button, iisa-isahin po niya yun. Eh, meron po siyang short description kung para saan po siya. So mamaya naman po is i-discuss po natin siya isa-isa. So in-next ko na lamang po ito. Ayan. So lahat po yan, iisa-isahin niya kung para saan po yung mga buttons na yun. So very user-friendly at madali po siya magagamit. Anyway, kung naiskipan niyo po yung part na ito na next-next tapos nalito po ulit kayo, meron naman po siya sa ilalim ng mga video tutorials. Next next lang po natin. Medyo marami lang po. Okay, ayun. To learn more, meron po tayong mga video tutorials, overview. So talagang hindi po tayo pababayaan ni Class Mark at hindi po tayo maliligaw. So for today's discussion, we're going to focus on these two buttons, the test and the group. Unahin po natin si group. Click ko lang po. So for the group, this is where I add my students or this is where I will add the members of Um, the quiz takers. Uh, for as educators, for example, ako po as a teacher, I have multiple sections per semester. So gusto ko pa rin po siya na nakagroup po siya dito per section para mas madali po siyang mahanap or yung student para nakagroup pa rin po siya at hindi magulo yung records natin. So click ko lang po yung button at the upper right, yung red, new group. For example, lagay ko yung section na BSIT 1A. Create group. Then once you create, mapupunta po siya sa loob ng settings ng group. So we have member settings, notify members, and delete options. Now may section na po tayong VSIT1A. All we have to do is to add the students or add members po dun sa group natin. Once I click this button, we have two options on how to add the members. The first option is that um, tayo po yung magre-register para po sa kanila. And the second option is that sila po yung magre-register sa sarili nila. But I prefer this first option para po sure tayo na yung mga students lang po natin yung talagang mga kapag-register po dun sa ating um, group. But I'll be showing you both ways naman po kung paano po mag-add. Unahin po natin yung second option na sila po ang magre-register. Open lang po ako ng isa pang browser classmarker.com para ito naman po yung sa registration ng student site. Pag nag-register for free, ang i-select po nila is yung test takers. So yung mga students po yan kasi nga po sila po yung magte-take ng test or ng exams or quizzes nyo. So once po yan, pupunta po siya sa wait lang po tayo for the connection. Ayan. Same lang din po nung kanina, all you have to do is to register or fill up the form. Pero meron po siyang added na text field. Nakita niyo po, humihingi po siya ng additional um, info which is the registration code. So for the registration code, sir, syempre mag-aas po yung students niyo. Sir, ma'am, where can I get the registration code? So as the administrator and as the instructor or teachers, you will be the one responsible to create or generate for the registration code. Okay. So, balik po muna tayo dun sa kaninang form natin. Ito po, kay class marker. Select lang po natin yung self-registration, yung sila po magre-register. Then, makikita nyo po, may, may bababa po dito. And then, additional information po ang lalabas. One limitation of class marker is that it can only accommodate up to 5,000 users at a time. But I think 5,000 is more than enough na po. Kasi as teachers naman po siguro, Per semester or per school year, di naman po siguro lalampas, lalampas ng libo yung students natin. Siguro po maximum na po yung mga 400 or 500 per semester or school year. So I guess 5,000 is more than enough. Then sa isang group or section, we can add up to 1,000 users. Now, kapag mag-recreate na po ako ng registration code, ilang registration code po ang aking gagawin. So nakadepende po yun kung ilang pong students meron dun sa section na yun or i-add sa group mo. For example, gusto ko lang i-add is 10. Then, I will click this Add Member Registration Codes. Mag-generate po siya ng 10 registration codes. Click ko lang po siya. Then, this green notification we, uh, is a good indication na successful po yung pag-generate ng kanyang um, registration code. Okay, saan po makikita yun? Balang po natin, lalabas po yung green button yung print member registration code and all you have to do is to click this one 
Once na clinic po natin to, maglalabas po siya ng another tab. And then lalabas na po yung kanyang mga registration codes. Ito. For easy viewing naman po, you can export it through Excel. Um, all you have to do is to click the export to Excel. Once na clinic po natin to, Yan. Magda-download po siya ng Excel file. Since nag-download na po siya, open lang po natin yung Excel file na dinownload. Then makikita niyo po, eh, nandito po yung 10 registration codes na na-generate. Yan. Saan po po yan? So kayo na po bahala mag-distribute nung, uh, nung registration code. Um, strictly one registration code per student po. Meaning, once na nagamit na po yung registration code, hindi na po siya pwede magamit ng ibang student. So, tigi-tigi sa po sila ang registration code. So, let us try to register one student. Copy-paste ko na lang po. Punta po ako doon sa browser ko na magre-register yung student. Copy-paste ko po dito yung student. Ayan, for example. Uh, for example, lagay ko po dito, first name is Keith, last name is Mercado. Then try ko po yung username na Keith Mercado. Baka hindi pa naman po nage... Ayan, available pa po siya. And for the password, Keith underscore 5 na lang din po ilagay ko. For the email address, sa student side, ano na lang po siya, option na lang po siya. Kailangan lang po siya once na nakalimutan po ni student yung password niya para po mag-forgot password, magsesend po siya sa email niya. So um, ngayon, wala naman po ako maisip na email address. Leave it blank na lang po. And then for the country, syempre Philippines po. Then I agree. And then register. Once na napindit yung register, uh, please make the corrections below and try red. Um, um, nakas nakakita po tayo ng error. So siguro po hindi lang po umabot yung password natin ng proper format. So ulitin ko, it must be at least 8 characters long and combination of number, letters, and special characters. Ulitin ko lamang po. Tingnan po, po natin. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So ayan, sakto na po yung ating password. Nagkulang lang po yung isang karakter yung password natin kaya hindi po tinanggap kanina. Okay, register po natin. As you can see, nalagi na po si Kit, pero wala pa po siyang makikitang kahit ano sa loob ng class marker o ng account niya. Kasi wala pa naman po tayong ginagawang test or quizzes. Ang magagawa lang po ni Kit is to um, edit yung mga informations or details po niya such as the username and the password. Okay po, going back po sa administrator side of the class marker. Yung kanina po ulit is student side. Balik po tayo. That's the first one on how, uh, that's the first option kung paano po tayo mag-add ng student. And we'll try now the second one. Ito po, yun tayo po ang magre-register sa students. So makikita naman po natin dito, all we have to do is to type the names of our students. So kung meron na lang po kayong checklist na nasa Excel file, pwede naman po i-copy-paste na lang po. Considering na yung order po ay masunod. So meron po tayo dito options, pwedeng first name first or last name first. So for example natin, first name first tayo. So dito mag-add na lang po tayo ng students, let's say Rizel, separated lang po tayo ng comma. Ayan, Cruz. Right? Yung sa dulo po, sabi ko nga po, gaya po nung kanina, option na lang po ulit yung email. Then... Um, Add lang po tayo ng tatlong students. Then for the member password, option na lang din po siya. Kapag wala po tayong sinet na password, the password would be um, generated by the class marker. Isang password per student. Pero kapag maglagay po tayo ng password, for example, is webinar underscore 5, iyan po yung magiging password ng lahat. Default password po nila. So temporary password lang naman po siya. So if you want to send the um, usernames and password na ginawa nyo sa email nyo, ito po, select lang po natin. And in na lang po natin to. Okay po. Then all we have to do is to click the red button which is the register new users. And makikita nyo po, nandito po sa taas, yung mga username 
and password po ng ating students. Check lang din po natin sa email kung nag-send po siya ng information. Yan, makita po natin, nag-send din po siya sa Gmail ng mga create or inad nating students yung mga username and password nila. So for the security of the students na lang siguro, since pare-pareho po sila ng password, pag login in na lang po sila and ask them immediately to change their password and username. Pwede naman po nilang gawin yun sa account nila. Okay, going back po sa ating class marker, makikita nyo po, sa ating group na ginawa which is yung BSIT 1A, we already have three students which is si Lester Cruz, Chrysel Maglalang, Kit Mercado, and Cruz Red. Now we already added our students. Meron na rin tayong isang section which is BSIT 1A. I think we are now ready to create exams or tests. So all we have to do at the right corner, upper right, all we have to do is to click the test. Ayan. Mag-direct po tayo sa test webpage. As you can see, we have six tabs here available, but we're just going to focus on the first three tabs, which is the test, the question bank, and the categories. Ang una ko pong ginagawa is to add categories. So possible po kasi na sa isang instructor, meron po siyang iba't ibang subjects na tinuturo. Pwede dito ko po siya i-add sa categories. By default, meron po siyang genera uh, generic parent, but you can also add your own category. Let's say mag-add po tayo ng isang category. Um, sulat po ako ng history, for example. Add parent category. So add din na po si history. Then we need to add the subcategory under history. So select lang po natin sa ilalim. Kanina po sa parent categories po tayo nag-add. Now we're going to add the subcategories dito po sa ilalim. All we have to do is to select yung history. And for the name, let's add, uh, let's say Philippines. Then add subcategory. Then as you can see, we have the generic um, category, which is history. And we also have the subcategory, which is Philippines. We can add another subcategory. Lagay ko ulit history. Lagay ko naman siguro is food naman, for example. Then add subcategory. So now we already added or created a category, which is history. Na meron pong two subcategories, which is food and the Philippines. Para lang po nakakategorize lang din po yung mga questions natin. Depende po sa subject na tinuturo natin. Now I'm going to the next stop which is the question bank. Si question bank po, all the questions you will be creating on this um, page will be added here sa question bank. Kumbaga para siyang repository or database or parang siya po yung nag store ng no, lahat po ng questions natin. So kung gusto niyo pong gamitin or i-recycle po yung mga questions, all you have to do is to look for the questions dito po sa ating question bank at pwede po natin siyang ma-reuse palagi. So hindi na po natin kailangan i-type ulit or gawin ulit yung mga questions natin. So for now, wala pa naman po tayong nagagawang questions. I-click lang po natin sa baba is yung let's get started na button. Then, lalabas po yung button, which is the add questions. Select lang po natin yung add to question bank. Okay, so like what I've said earlier, one of the features of the key of the class marker is that meron po siya multiple types of tests na pwedeng pagpilian. We have the multiple choice, we have true or false, we have the matching type, the free text, or pwede po siya sa mga identification, fill in the blanks for the grammars, and we also have essay. Let's say choose po natin is multiple choice. Yan. Actually, I prepared questions na po para medyo mabilis po tayo. Yan. I prepared questions na po kanina. So dito po, lagay po natin. Copy-paste lang po natin. Okay. So for the first question, which, which of the following is the national hero of the Philippines? Pwede po natin baguhin yung sulat niya. Pwede po natin siyang i-bold. Pwede po natin siyang palitan ng color. Pwede po natin lakihan yung font style. 
So, kayo na po bahala for the editing of the questions. Then, sa ilalim po, dito po natin ilalagay yung mga answers. Let's say, lagay ko po dito is Apolinario Mabini for letter A, letter B, Juan Luna, letter C, Jose Rizal, and for letter D, Antonio Luna. Then, paano po malalaman kung sino po dyan yung tamang sagot? All you have to do is to check the checkbox nung correct answer, which is si Jose Rizal. Actually, there are times din po sa multiple choice na nag accept tayo ng two answers sa ating choices. Pwede rin po natin iselect yung iba. Depende po sa mga tamang correct answers. Uh, correct answers. But for this question naman po, isa lang naman po yung correct answer. So, i-check ko lang po si Jose Rizal. You can add more options or choices. Pwede naman po yan. Pero kung accidental na pindot nyo po siya at ayaw nyo naman po maglagay ng letter E, letter F, leave it blank na lang po. Kung alin lang naman po yung may fill up, yun lang naman po yung ma-view view as choices. Then sa ilalim, generic siguro ilagay ko po siya under Philippines na history. Then pointing system po natin, kung ilang points po yung question na yun, pwede po natin gawing two, but for this question, gawin lang po natin siyang one point. For the randomized answers, kapag niyas nyo po siya, nakarandom po yung kanyang choices. Depend, um, kahit po iba't ibang students, possible po na iba-iba yung, uh, yung answers or yung order ng answers natin. So hindi po siya fixed na kung ano man po yung nilagay natin dito, not all the time, ganun po ang magiging order ng kanyang choices. So, yes lang po natin para nakarandomize orders. And for the answer selection, you have two choices again for the radio buttons and check boxes. Kapag radio buttons po ang sinelect natin, it means we're only going to accept one correct answer. Kapag check box po, possible po na multiple answers po ang i-accept niya. But since we're just going to accept one correct answer, Radio button na lang po yung gamitin ko. So, isa-save ko lang po siya ulit. Then, it will notify you that your question was saved in your question bank. So, successfully created na po si first question. Next, maggawa po tayo ng matching type po siguro. Sa matching type, there are two options. Whether yung pa-drop down or multimedia kapag images po yung gusto niya. For now, we're just going to add the drop down for the choices. So the question again, meron na po akong prepared questions. Okay, so nakalagay po dito. Balik po tayo sa ating yan. match the options below. For example, lagay ko dito is bound mayon. Then at the right part of the page, nandito po yung kamatch niya. Lagay lang po natin, for example, sa albay po siya makikita. And then for sa clue B, lagay lang po natin, Chocolate Hills, which is ang tamang sagot ay makikita sa Bohol. And for the underground river, the correct answer would be in Palawan. For now, for our example, tatlo lang po muna ilagay natin. You can also add more incorrect matches. Kung baga, di ba, pag nagmamatching type po tayo, we can add yung mga panggulo nating tinatawag. Pampalito lang din po for extra challenge po ng matching type natin. Let's say maglagay po tayo ng Davao. Maglagay din po tayo ng Cebu. Yan. Okay na po siguro yung dalawang panggulo na answers. Then, category, other Philippines na lang din ulit. Shuffle. Kung gusto niyo po naka-shuffle yung order po ng mga choices as well as the questions. So ngayon ang gusto ko lang pong i-shuffle is yung mga choices po niya sa ating drop-down menu. For the grading scale, don't worry naman po. Sabi ko po sa inyo, it's very uh, user-friendly. Kapag di niyo po alam kung para saan itong specific option na to, meron naman po siyang question mark sa gilid and all you have to do is tapatan lang po ng cursor and then may description na po siya kung para saan po yung option na yon. Kapag in po natin yung grading scale for the matching type, kailangan po lahat ma-match in order for you to get the one point. Pero kapag partial with deduction, kung ilan po yung tamang sagot niya, may points po yun. 
So ito po ang gusto natin. Kung ilan po yung nakuha niya or namas niya tama, bibigyan po natin ng one point. So iyon po ang pipiliin ko at isisave ko po yung ating matching type. So we already added two questions which is the multiple choice and the matching type. Then I will add last question for the Philippines category which is the essay. Um, let's say ang question lang po natin is describe the Philippines. Yan. Then ilagay lang po natin under category Philippines and available points for essay type. Let's say ilagay ko is 5 points po siya. Then isave ko lang po ulit. Yan. So we already have three questions. Going back to the question bank, makikita nyo po dito, nandito po yung tatlong questions na nagawa natin. Okay? Under the Philippines category po yan. Let's add another two questions na lang po para dun po sa isa nating category which is the food. Gawin ko naman po true or false para matry po natin lahat ng um, options. Okay, ito po yung question po natin. Let's say, yan. Is quail eggs the key ingredient for the street food quick-quick? True or false? Siyempre po, true po tayo. So, yan po i-select natin. Then, under, ilagay po natin siya under food category. And then, one point lang po yung question na yun. Save lang po ulit natin. And then we also have the free text, which is ginagamit po natin for identification or fill in the blanks. So say, ilagay po natin, ito po yung question natin. Um, balik po tayo sa, yan. The question is, give me one ingredient for adobo. Um, there are many possible answers po para dito po sa ating question na to. So pwede po tayo maglagay ng multiple answers dito. So kahit ano po dito, kahit ano po isagot nila, basta po nandito po sa accepted answers na nilagay natin, i-accept po siya as one point. Let's say, ilagay po natin dito, garlic. Pero kapag sinagot po nila is pepper, tama din po. Kapag chicken, okay din po. Soy sauce, i-accept din po siya. So any of these four po, i-accept po as the correct answer for these specific questions. Okay po? Proceed po tayo. Under food category na lang din po. And points available, one point na lang din po for that question. Now going back to the question bank, balik lang po ako. Makikita niyo po, we have five questions already sa ating question bank. Kung gusto niyo pong i-search, for example, napakadami niyo na pong questions, meron naman po tayong search term dito para ma-filter po natin yung mga questions. Let's say, ang gusto ko lang pong i-search is yung mga questions under Philippine category. So select ko lang po yung Philippines and then go. Ang ma-view view nyo lang po ay yung mga questions under Philippine category. So mas madali po siyang mahanap at ma-filter. Okay po. Now we have created our questions sa ating question bank. Questions pa lang po ang na-create natin. But the actual quiz or the actual test itself, hindi pa po natin siya ginagawa. So that's the task of the first step, which is yung test. Yan. Kita niyo, wala pa po tayong quiz na nagagawa. All you have to do is to click this button, new test. Then for example, ilagay lang po natin ay siya po yung ating quiz number one. Yung category natin is gawin na lang muna natin generic. And then start adding questions. So nasa loob po tayo ni quiz number one. This time, dito na po tayo mag a ng questions for, quest, uh, for quiz number one. Pwede po tayo mag a ng introduction. So let us say, this is your quiz number one. So update lang po natin. Then sa ilalim, we have two options again on how to add uh, questions sa ating quiz number one. Meron po tayong add fixed questions and then set random questions. Unahin lang po natin si add fixed questions. Pag sinelect po natin yung add new questions, parang yung kanina lang po yun, yung nag-create tayo ng question. And then automatically, madadagdag po siya kay question bank. But since we have questions na naman na nasa loob ni question bank, select na lang po tayo from your question bank. Select na lang po natin to. Yan. For example ulit, napakadami na ulit questions. Gusto niyo i-filter lang. Gusto ko yung lahat ng questions 
Under the Philippine category, sila po yung i-add ko sa quiz number one. Then, lalabas na po yung questions. Gawin ko lang, add question to test. Add question to test. I-add ko po siya doon sa quiz number one natin. Add question to test. Now, going back po sa ating test. Under quiz number one, we already have three questions. Ayan. So kapag nag-take po ng quiz yung student, makikita na po niya yung tatlong questions po na yan under quiz number one. And now for the next option, which is set random questions. Ibig sabihin lang po nung add fix questions, kahit ano po mangyari, kahit sino po mag-take na student, makikita at makikita po niya yung tatlong questions po na yan. Kumbaga fix questions po siya. Then for the next option po sa pag-add ng question, which is the set random question, click lang po natin siya. Then edit settings. Upon clicking the edit settings, lalabas po ito. Then select your random question settings. Click lang po natin itong nag-iisang button na ito. Then mamimili po siya for option 1 or option 2. Medyo mahirap po yung option 2. So mag-focus po tayo kay option 1. Click lang po natin yung use this option. Ibig sabihin, we're going to add question number four. Meron na po tayong question, uh, three questions. Mag-add tayo ng question number four using the set random question option. So ilan ang gusto mong i-add na question? One lang po ang ilagay natin, for example. So th this would be your question number four. Saan category po siya mamimili ng question? Diba na-add na po natin yung lahat ng questions under Philippines category? Ang hindi na lang po natin na-add is yung mga questions under food category. So ang iselect ko lang po ay food category. And then randomly mix in. Now we are going to ask, Sir, dalawa po yung available questions po under food category. Eh ang i-add lang po natin ay isa. So sino po doon yung pipiliin niyang question? So that would be the task of the class marker kung sino po yung iseselect niyang question sa dalawa na yun. Kaya nga po siya random, naka-random order po siya. Possible po na si student A, question number one po yung mapunta sa kanya, tapos kay student B, yung second question naman ang mapunta sa kanya. For added, extra challenge lang po talaga siya. Para meron po silang fixed questions at the same time meron po silang questions na iba-iba per student. So... Maganda po siya talaga para po may challenge po yung ating test or quiz. Then submit lang po natin. Then makikita nyo, fix na po yung question number one, question number two, and question number three. Pero for the question number four, hindi po siya naka-view. Pero nakasabi po dito ay randomly selected under food category. So mamaya po natin malalaman kapag trinay po natin kung which question po ang i-generate ni class marker for the question number four. So once we're done with our questions, our quiz number one, we can preview the test. Kapag preview natin yung test, ito yung actual na makikita po ng student site kapag magsasagot na po sila ng quiz natin. So click ko lang po ulit yung preview test. Then may instructions po tayo. So mamaya mababago po natin yan. Pero for now, itest lang po muna natin yung quiz natin. Start lang po tayo. So, give me one ingredients for adobo. Kung mapapansin nyo po, kanina, di ba, hindi naman po natin inad yung question na to. Doon po tayo gumawa or kumuha ng questions under Philippine um, category. Pero kumuha po siya sa food category. Ito na po yung sinet natin question number four na nakarandomized. So, let's say garlic. Then, Jose Rizal, next lang po natin. Ah, sige, magbali po tayo ng isa. Juan Luna, for example. Then, describe the Philippines. Um, let's say, hello, um, everything. Yan. May word count naman po yan, just in case na may nire-require po yung teacher nyo kung ilang word counts po ang kailangan for the essay type. So, next lang po natin. Then, for the Mount Mayon, lagay po natin, ano nga ba sagot dito? <laughs> Siyempre po, Albay. Chocolate Hills is from Bohol and Underground River po ay sa Palawan. Then, finish now. 
Pag tapos na po tayo, sure na po tayo. Pero kung meron po kayong bali- uh, gusto balikan na question, pwede naman pong i-previews and then pwede po natin palitan yung sagot. Then, confirm, finish. Now. Then, as you can see, makikita nyo po kagad yung result ng inyong quiz. Yan. Isa sa feature po ni Class Marker, makikita nyo kagad at the end of the quiz yung result po ng inyong exam. Pero makikita nyo po dito, meron po notification that the score is not yet final. Kasi may mga questions po tayo na nagre-require ng manual grading, which is yung ating essay type. Ito po. So si teacher pa po, si administrator ang mag-check po ng ating essay type. Pero kung wala po siyang essay type, fix na po yun. Makikita nyo na po yung final results ng scores ng bata or ng ating student. Okay? So yun na po yun. Nakagawa na po tayo ng balik po tayo sa test. We've already created a group. We already created a section, which is the BSIT1A. We already created questions at the question bank, and we already created our quiz number one. Ano na lang po ang kulang? Meron na po tayong quiz number one, pero hindi pa po natin siya ina-assign to any section. Ibig sabihin, may quiz po tayo, pero wala pa pong um, section ang makakapag-take ng quiz number one na yun kasi hindi pa po natin siya ina-assign. So all we have to do is, kapag clinic nyo po yan, quiz number one, lalabas po yung assign. Kapag clinic po natin itong assign button, yan. Yung first option lang po ang ating um, gagamitin. Assign to group. Ang assign to group, nandito po yung mga list of sections na ginawa po natin or list of groups na ginawa natin. Pero kanina, ang ginawa lang po natin is one section which is BSI21A. So, ang BSI21A lang po ang isa-select natin. Then, in-next ko lang po. Then, dito na po lalabas yung settings, yung iba't ibang settings. So, iisa-isahin po natin si settings. For the test access, for the first one, we have the availability. Under availability options, we have two options. The first option is that meron tayong choices na available or unavailable. Kapag sinelect po natin si unavailable, nakaredy lang po yung test, pero hindi pa po siya makikita ni student. Kung gusto na po natin siya makita ng mga students, um, piliin po natin yung available na option. Or sa option 2 po natin, pwede po tayo mag-set ng schedule. Let's say today is June 17. Gusto ko maging available yung quiz ko ng June 18 from 12 a.m. Available siya hanggang June 19 hanggang 12 a.m. Pwede rin po yun. Ibig sabihin, magiging available lang po yung quiz or makikita lang po ng student yung quiz kapag tumating po sa date na to at sa time na to. At hindi na po nila makikita yung quiz or yung test, kapag lumampas na po sa date na to at sa time po na ito. Pero for our example, syempre hindi po natin ito na-try ito. Baka magtagal po tayo pag-aantayin pa po natin. Ang pipiliin ko na lang po is available. For the attempts, syempre we don't want our students to take the exam multiple times. Baka kaka, um, kakatry niya na kakatry, ma-perfect niya na talaga. Pwede rin po natin iset, pwede pong two times niya i-take or for my case, mas gusto ko po na isang take lang po per student ang gagawin sa ating quiz or test. For the test introduction, ito po yung makikita lang ng student as instructions. Dito po lalabas kung mayroon po time limit, kung may passing mark. Depende po dun sa options na pinili natin. Lalabas lang po siya sa introduction. So para lang po may guide yung student, gusto ko po siyang i-display at the start of the quiz. Okay, we can continue. For the time limit, we can also set the time limit of the quiz or test. For example, you only want the student to take the quiz for only one hour. Pero naka by minutes po siya, so pwede po natin ilagay 60 minutes good for one hour. So ibig sabihin, kapag lumampas po ng one hour, automatically mag-stop po yung ating quiz. Then, the resume later option, Kapag chinek po natin to, ibig pong sabihin, pwede pong mag-stop yung student sa kalikit na anong quiz, isave niya muna, and then i-continue niya sa mga susunod na oras. But 
kung gusto po natin gawin ng student yun ng isang upuan lang, ino na lang po natin or i-uncheck na lang po natin itong option. For the test questions, ito po yung display. You can display up to 10 questions per page. Pero para sa akin po kasi, mas malinis tingnan, one question per page po ang gagawin ko. You can also display kung ilang points po meron sa question na yun. And you can also display the category kung ano po category ng question po na yun. For the randomized order, para din po yun sa diniscuss ni Sir Gabriel kanina, you can also randomize the questions. Gusto natin nakashuffle siya, nakajumpled siya to avoid leakage na din. So i-check ko lang po siya. Then answers. Kapag nilagay, chinek po natin yung mass answer questions, ibig sabihin, kahit hindi po alam ng student yung sagot, required po siya mag-iwan na kahit anong sagot. Pag chinek din po natin yung change answers, ibig sabihin po yan, pwede po siya bumalik sa previous page, pwede po niyang palitan yung kanyang answers. Pero kung gusto niyo po siya na once na nag-next po siya at ayaw na po palitan yung sagot, i-uncheck niyo lang po siya. Kung baga parang touch move na po yung ginawa niyang sagot. Parang kumbaga sa in real world, parang no erasures, parang ganun. So i-check po siya para makabalik po siya at mapalitan yung sagot. For the result of the page, gusto ko pong ma-display yung points and percentage niya para aware ka agad yung student kung ilan yung nakuha niyang points. For the feedback, mamaya malalaman po natin kung para saan po yung feedback. Pero as of now, gusto ko po siyang i-check or i-display. For the questions, i-uncheck ko lang po siya. Why? Kasi kapag chinek po natin to, ibig sabihin po niyan, at the end of the quiz or test, ma-view-view po ni student yung mga questions at po yung mga correct answers. Siyempre, to avoid leakage and possible cheating, kasi pwede po may screenshot yun, may set. Ang gusto ko na lang po makita niya at the end is yung kanyang points and yung feedback. Hindi na po niya muna i-reveal yung correct answers. And for the feedback, ito lang po yun. For example, mag-set ako ng passing mark. For example, 50%. Kapag pass, ibig sabihin, lumagpas ng 50%, may feedback tayo na congrats. Yan. Congrats tayo. Kapag fail, um, try your luck next time. Parang ganyan. So, yan po ilalabas kapag fail. Then, ino na lang po natin si webhook. ino si certificate. Then, ayan, puro no na lang po. And then, kapag tapos na po natin gawin yung mga set, sa settings, pwede na po natin siyang i-save. Or, ayan, i-click lang po natin yung assign. Okay, so yung green notification, ibig sabihin, good um, indication po na successful po yung pag-create po natin ng quiz at pag-a-assign ng section. So, balik po tayo sa test. Nakikita nyo, pag tinignan nyo yung quiz number one, meron na pong section ang magte-take ng quiz number one. Okay? So, tingnan po natin sa student side na po tayo ulit. Punta po ako sa isang account which is sa student side. Tingnan po natin kung ma-view-view na po niya yung quiz kasi naka-available na po siya. Punta lang po siya sa group test. Ayan, for the security, nilag out po siya automatically kasi matagal po tayong hindi nag- Uh, naka-idle. Git Mercado. Ayan. Git underscore 5. Lagi lang po natin. Ulitin ko po ulit. Git Mercado. Baka mali po yung password natin. Naalala ko po may 05 nga pala siya. So login po natin. Ayan. So makikita nyo kanina, di ba? Walang laman po nung nag-login siya. Pero ngayon, meron na po siyang quiz number 1. So, attempts allowed, one lang. Once na pinindot ko po yung start, pinindot ni student yung start, makikita po niya yung instructions na mayroong four questions, uh, may time limit na one hour, one attempt, and so on and so forth. Ito po yung mga sinet po natin sa settings kanina. So, kapag ready na po si student na mag-take ng quiz, pwede na po siya mag-start. So, ayan po, nakarandomize na po yung questions, hindi naman po yung una. So, makikita niyo po sa taas, nandito po yung time. And nandito po yung points and yung category. Naka-display din po. 
So for Mount Mayon, lagay ko po Albay. Then Chocolate Hills is Pohol. Underground River is in Palawan. Then next, which of the following is the national hero of the Philippines? Um, Imali lang po natin. Yan, isa ko po si B. Pag nag-next tayo, inalaw naman po natin na bumalik sa previous question, di ba kanina? So pwede po tayong bumalik sa previous question at pwede po natin siyang i-edit. So, ayan, imali ko pa rin po para po sa pointing system mamaya. For adobo, ilagay po natin is um, soy sauce. Ano na lang? Garlic. Ayan. So then next is yung ating essay type, which is uh, wonderful. Wonderful, for example. And then kapag tapos na po si student, pwede na pong finish now. Then in confirm, finish now. Then makikita niyo po, makikita ni Kit Mercado, which is the student, yung kanyang partial score at partial percentage na meron siyang 2 out of 8 correct answers. And meron po siyang 25%. Pero meron po tayo note dito that the score is not yet final. Some questions have been sent for manual grading, which is yung essay type po natin. Kasi si administrator pa po ang magbibigay ng points for the essay type. So tapos na po i-take ni Kit Mercado. One attempt lang po siya. Kapag bumalik po siya sa group test, makikita lang po niya yung quiz. Hindi na po niya pwedeng sagutan ulit. Ang makikita na lang po niya is yung kanyang result. Yun na lang po ang map view niya. Okay. So going back to the administrator site, administrator site tayo, i-refresh lang po natin kasi po may nagsagot na pong isang studyante. Then i-click ko lang po si result. Makikita niyo po yung green button at the right side corner. Click lang po natin si result. Kapag klinik po natin yan, yan, pupunta po tayo sa page which is nandito po yung mga students natin under BSIT1A. So makikita po ni administrator na si Kit Mercado pa lang po ang nag-take ng quiz. Na meron siyang 2 out of 8 correct answers and a duration, uh, ito po yung gano'n niya katagal sinagutan yung kanyang quiz at kung kailan or yung date and time kung kailan siya nagsagot. Kapag final na po yung score kanina, let's say walang essay type yung quiz kanina, green na po yan, which is an indication na final na po yung grade. But since naka-yellow po siya, indication po siya na meron po pa um, item na kailangan for manual grading. So paano po natin che-checkan yun? Meron po tayong button sa gilid, which is the grade button. Select lang po natin. So nandito po ulit yung results ni Kit Mercado. Yung temporary feedback niya, try your luck next time. Then, makikita po natin yung mga questions and then yung mga sinagot niya kung saan po siya nagkamali. Ayan, tsaka po yung correct answer. And for the question number four, grading. Ibig sabihin, babasahin mo pa po yung essay type ni Kit Mercado. Then, kapag na-check nyo na po, ito po yung sagot niya, wonderful. Edit points. Click lang po natin yung edit points and then lalabas na po dito yung mga points which is the maximum of 5 kasi ang sinet po natin nung gumawa tayo ng question, 5 points po yung essay type. So pwede po tayong maglagay na 4 points or 5 points so depende po sa atin. Let's say i-perfect ko na po siya, gawin ko pong 5 points. Yan. Kuwari, nagandahan po ako doon sa sagot niya. So isa-save ko lang po yan. Once na sinave na po siya, Ayan, na-update na po yung score niya. Close ko lang po, i-refresh po natin. mag update na po yung score niya. So makikita nyo, kulay green na po siya. Ibig sabihin, final na po yung result ng kanyang quiz. Tingnan po ulit natin yung result. He got 7 out of 8 correct answers. Percentage po is 87.5. So, ibig sabihin, pasado po siya kasi ang sinet po nating passing grade is 50%. So, ang feedback ay congrats. So, si Kit Mercado, yan na po yung final score niya. Tingnan po natin sa um, account ni Kit Mercado kung na-update po yung kanyang 
score. Punta po tayo sa group test. Ito po ah, kay Kit Mercado po ito. Group test. Yan, na-update na po yung kanyang result. So makikita na po ni student, napasado po siya at ito po yung kanyang final score. So pumasa po si Kit. Congrats, Kit. Yan. So yun po yung side nung... Yan. That's how you make quizzes and tests sa ating class marker. For the limitations of the class marker naman po, actually, hindi ko naman po siya pwedeng masabing um, limitation kasi available po siya to the premium account ni class marker. Lahat po nung pinakita ko po kanina, available po siya for the free account of the class marker. Pero po kung gusto niyo po ng additional features, you have to upgrade your account to premium. Kapag naka-premium account kayo, ito po yung mga additional features na meron si Class Marker. You can upload images, files, audios, and videos. You can also create certificates. For example, gusto nyo after the test, mag-generate, pagpasado, mag-generate ng certificate. Possible po siya kay Class Marker. You can also export the results, uh, results for offline analysis. Kasi yung results po kanina, nakita lang po natin siya online. We can also import questions through Excel kasi ang pinakita ko lang po kanina, doon po mismo tayo kay Class Marker nag-create ng questions. Pero kung meron po kayong prepared questions, pwede po natin siyang ilagay sa Excel and then i-import na lang po siya. And sending of emails to the admin or quiz takers for, yung, for example, yung final grade, magsesend po siya sa kanyang email. Pero, pero aside from these limitations kay free account, Balik po tayo kay Ayan. Balik po tayo kay test. As you can see, meron po dito certificates. Actually, you can still design Ayan, new certificate. Actually, you can still design the certificate. Meron po siyang sariling certificate creator. Ayan, pwede po tayo mag-create. Papag-create po tayo. Ang hindi lang po niya magagawa is that ma-assign siya sa test or sa quiz. Kasi ma-assign lang po natin siya sa test or sa quiz kapag nag-upgrade tayo sa kanyang premium account. Pero I think naman po na even the free account itself, enough na po siya para makagawa ng quizzes at test. Kasi lahat naman po ng basic needs natin to create online quizzes and exams, available naman po siya for the um, free account. So kung gusto niyo lang po ng additional features, tsaka lang po kayo mag-upgrade. So kung medyo may extra budget po siguro tayo or may budget po for, uh, si school for us, pwede po tayo mag-upgrade dito. So for the pricing na lang po ni Class Marker siguro, pwede po kayo pumunta sa upgrade dito po sa taas. Nandito naman po yung pricing po ng Class Marker. Pero si Class Marker po, 50% discount po siya ngayon uh, para po sa help in, time of, uh, in this time of pandemic. So naka 50% discount po siya. So for the pricing, pwede niyo pong check na lang po sa website ni Class Marker. But I guess the free account itself is um, enough already to help us create online quizzes or online assessment for our students. So that would be all. So I, sana magamit po natin si Class Marker for our online quiz and online test. So for our next speaker, very interesting eh, um very interesting po talaga and interactive po yung kanya i discuss so let us welcome our next speaker miss lorraine tolentino So thank you so much, Sir Lem. So good afternoon, everyone. I'm Lorraine Italentino from the College of Information and Communication. 
Technology of Bulacan State University. And I'm your resource speaker for Kahoot. So now, ano ba yung tinatawag natin Kahoot? Para sa mga hindi familiar, Kahoot is free okay, for basic account. Pero may different types of accounts si Kahoot, which is paid account. Mamaya, i-discuss ko yun. Next is Kahoot is game-based. Bakit po siya game-based? Kasi you can create multiple choice type of questions, puzzles, and polls. Next one is Kahoot is interactive. So aside from multiple choice question, multiple choice type questions, you can also get feedbacks or surveys from uh, your students through polls. Next, Kahoot also is used as a learning after sorry, learning assessment tool para yung mga estudyante natin, yung mga nakakaraang uh, topic natin, ma-review natin yung mga students kung na, kung na minaintindihan ba sila or kung natandaan ba nila yung mga top, previous topics natin. And the good thing is Kahoot supports all platforms. Whether you're using Android, iOS, it doesn't even matter because as long as you have internet connection, you can use Kahoot. Now, who can use Kahoot? So number one is the educators. So educators because for presentation or for learning assessment. So what I said earlier, earlier, it is also used for learning assessment. Next is the students. Yung students, sila yung magiging audience nyo or sila yung magsisilbing players dun sa game na Kahoot. And the last one is professionals or individuals. Technically, kahit sino pwedeng gumamit ng Kahoot. So for example, pwede nilang gamitin sa team meeting, team building, or kahit sa reunions, pwede nyo gamitin si Kahoot. Next, how does Kahoot work? Or how does Kahoot work? So first, you need to create yung tinatawag natin na Kahoot. So, pag sinabing Kahoot, it is typically a question. So, Kahoot is equivalent pa rin sa, sorry, uh, Kahoot is equivalent pa rin sa quiz. Next, you can, uh, pagkatapos mong gawin yung Kahoot mo, you can host or share Kahoots. And, pag na-share mo na sa students mo, pwede na kayong maglaro ng Kahoot. And at the end of the game, magpo-provide si Kahoot ng reports doon sa naging uh, game nyo. Now, let's try Kahoot. Para naman, bago ko ipakita sa inyo paano siya i-create, itry muna natin. So I want you to go to kahoot.it. Again, k-a-h-o-o-t dot i-t. And hihingin kayo ng game pin, I want you to enter 911-777. Again, 911-777. After that, after you input yung game pin, hihingan kayo ng nickname or your name. So dito, discuss ko muna itong interface ni Kahoot. So it is for full screen. Full screen. Ito naman is yung music na nagpe-play, and then ito is yung volume. So, karinig yung music ni Kahoot. So, habang naghihintay tayo ng players, nagdi-discuss ko ngayon yung types of accounts ni Kahoot. Punta tayo sa kahoot.com, and then under school, uh, merong available plans. Business or parents affected by COVID-19. The good news is, pwede po 
tayo mag-create ng premium account in Kahoot for free. Again, the good news is, pwede tayo mag-upgrade ng premium account kay Kahoot for free. Nakapasok na po tayo sa Kahoot. I-reload ko natin. I-reload po natin ulit. Okay. Sorry. So, the game pin, again, sorry, ibahin natin yung game pin, 2439263. Again, 2439263. So, balik po tayo dito kay Kahoot. So, for free upgrade, login, kung meron kayong Gmail account or Microsoft account, you can hindi, ka, hindi nyo na kailangan mag-sign up sa Kahoot. Just click this one or kung wala or kung gusto nyo kung meron kayong iba, ibang aka or kung meron kayong ibang email, you just have to click the sign up button. Okay, I guess we can start with 100... 80, 179. Okay, 180 players. So dito, mapapansin nyo, meron dito ang lock this game to prevent more players from joining. So halimbawa, may class uh, size kayo ng 30 students. So pag naka-30 na, pwede nyo na i-lock yung, yung uh, pag-join. So pag nilock natin, mapapansin nyo, naka-encrypted na dito yung game pin. At wala na iba makakapasok sa game. So, let's start. So, medyo mabilis yung questions. Para hindi sayang sa oras. We have 14 questions. Pabilisan to. And at the same time, kailangan tama yung sagot mo. So, question number one. Since the year 2000, which countries have not hosted the Summer Olympic Games? Spain, Greece, United Kingdom, Germany. By the way, pwede po dito yung multiple answers. Okay po. Again, pwede dito yung multiple answers. May mga questions tayo na pwede yung multiple answers. Okay, next tayo. Okay, so dito makikita nyo sa so scoreboard yung mga top uh, yung mga top students natin na may na nag-garner ng mas mat, uh, pinakamataas na, sto, na score. Next, question number two. Order these countries by largest land area to smallest. So, pag susunod sa nyo, largest area to smallest. Largest land area to smallest. Okay. Oh, 
Okay. So, first is Russia, next is Canada, and then China and United States. So, next one. So, ito ni yung scoreboard natin. After every question, pinapakita po yung scoreboard para uh, para makita natin kung sino yung pinakamataas na score. Next, ito po ay hindi question but explanation that Russia is the largest country in the world by area. It measures a massive 6.6 .6 million square miles or 17.1 million square kilometers. So next question na tayo. Yung mga questions natin, pinaghalo-halo natin. So different type of questions para uh, para mas interesting. Next, choose the flag of Finland. So, alin dito yung flag ng Finland? So, eto. Yung white and blue. Okay. So, 16 participants got the correct answer. Next question. So, dito, nag-update siya after every after every question, yung mga scores. So, click natin yung next. Next is multi-select question. So, ulitin ko dito, pwedeng marami yung sagot. Which of this film made over $1 billion at the box office? Harry Potter, Avatar, Finding Nemo, and Minions. Avatar and Minions. Okay. So, dito nag update yung score. So, kanina, iba na ngayon yung nasa top natin. O, yung top one natin. Next question, true or false? Is Indian Ocean the largest ocean in the world? True or false? Ibilis. Okay. So, the answer is false because the largest ocean in the world is Pacific Ocean. Nag-update siya. Next. When did World War II end? So, anong taon? 1948, 1943, 1945, or 1946? Okay. The correct answer is 1945. So, 12 students got the correct answer. And then, nag-update ulit siya. So, iba na naman yung top one kung mapapansin nyo. Next question. There's an open-ended. So, times two. So, kayo yung magta-type dito. Okay? Which planet is fourth from the sun? Again, which planet is the fourth from the sun? So, ita-type nyo. Okay? Pabilisan. Forty-two yung nagsagot. And the correct answer is... Correct answer is Mars. So, anin yung nakakuhang tama? Tignan natin. So, nag-iba na naman yung scoreboard. Okay, next question. So, which is the capital city of Italy? Is it Rome, Milan, Venice or Florence? Bibilis, magsagos. Okay. The correct answer is Rome. So 15 got the correct answers. Ayan, tingnan natin kung sino na ang top one. Okay. Next. True or false? Yuri Gagarin is the first person to step on the moon. Is it true or false? It's false because ang unang next step sa moon is Neil Armstrong. Okay, so 28 person uh, got the correct answer. Next. Okay, stay lang sila dyan. Next. Okay, so pagsusunod-sunodin nyo ulit ito. Put these planets in order from furthest.
from the sun to the to the closest. So pinakamalayo ang pinakamalapit sa sun. So 92% got the correct answer. So Neptune, Saturn, Jupiter, and Venus. Ayan, tingnan natin yung scoreboard. Nag-update. Medyo matagal lang. Konti. So ayun yung mag-update. Anyway. Next question. This one is a poll. So have you learned anything so far? So it's your choice. Kung ano yung nandiyan dyan. Okay. Next. Quiz. The world's tallest building is the One World Trade Center, Burj Khalifa, Shanghai Tower, or Central Park Tower. Okay, 49 answers, 51. And the correct answer is Burj Khalifa. Next one. Okay, so, nabago na uli. Medyo, nabago, medyo may nabago sa scoreboard natin. Last question. Okay, this one is times two. Points. Orology is the study of flags, mountains, languages, or sounds. Okay, the correct answer is mountains. So, tingnan natin kung may nabago ba. Third. Okay, na yung top one. Naging third na lang siya. Okay, second. Okay, so Sir Gavs is our first. Seven out of 14 questions is correct. May may more runner-ups. Okay po. So dito, get feedback. Ito yung tinatawag after the end of each game, meron tayong tinatawag na reports. So may options tayo to view your report or to save results. So halimbawa, gusto natin i-view yung report nung game na yon. So, ito yun. Okay. So, we have 196 players, 14 questions. Ito yun. 7%. Players question. And then, time kung ilan, gana natin katagan nila, which is 11 minutes. Ito. Ngayon, downloadable po siya, yung kanina binigay. Ah, kanina. Pag ito-download natin, may two options tayo. So, pwedeng i-download natin through our computer or pwedeng i-save natin sa Google Drive natin. Ngayon, since alam na natin kung paano gumagana yung kahoot, paano naman tayo ngayon gagawa? So, now, dito, nakapag, sorry, nakapag-login na ako dito. Pagka-login mo, ito yung lalabas ngayon sa screen mo. Okay? So, kung mapapansin nyo, yung plan ko dito is premium for higher education. Libre lang po itong upgrade. So, katulad ng tinuro ko sa inyo kanina, Kailangan mag-login muna kayo or mag-sign up muna kayo and then punta ulit kayo sa kahoot.com and then sa pinakataas, tatanungin, are you a teacher, a business, or a parent affected by affected by COVID-19? See how Kahoot can support you. Pag-click yung learn more, may mili ka dito. So, halimbawa, teachers, and then, i-click mo tong link na to. Click here to get access to premium for schools or higher education. And from there, tatanungin ka kung you're, uh, are you from a school or from a higher education? And then, yun na. process na nila automatically yung account mo. So, balik tayo. Ngayon, so dito makikita nyo. So, home. Okay. And then, dito naman is discover. Sa discover, pwede tayong maghanap ng mga kahoots na naka-upload by other persons na naka-public. Okay. Halimbawa, teacher ka sa science, teacher ka sa math, teacher ka sa, uh, sa history. Ayan. So marami po dito ang options. Kung gusto nyo pag-review uh, sa geometry, yung mga ganun, nandito dito lahat. Okay po. Next, dito naman sa kahoots. So gagawa na tayo ng kahoot natin. Dito sa kahoots, 
Meron dito, my kahoots, favorites, shared with me, and then drafts. Sa drafts, ito yung mga kahoot na hindi natin natapos. So ngayon, paano tayo gagawa ng kahoot? Dito sa upper right side, nakikita niyo po ba? So I hope nakikita niyo. Meron dito create. So click create. And then dito, create new Kahoot. Pero merong template si Kahoot na pwede nyo gamitin. Pero kung gusto nyo, uh, personalize nyo yung Kahoot. So click new Kahoot. And then, kailangan nyo ngayon pangalanan yung Kahoot nyo. Halimbawa is animals. Okay, halimbawa is animals. Ngayon, may choice tayo. May choice tayo dito na maglagay ng cover image. So, kung maglalagay tayo, meron dalawang options. From image library or upload image. Sa image library, library ito ni Kahoot. Okay? Ulitin ko, sa image library, si Kahoot yung magpo-provide ng image. So, halimbawa, i-click natin tong animals. Ito. May mga images dito ng animals na pwede natin gamitin as a cover photo. For example, this one. Ayan. Or, pwede rin namang upload image. Kung meron kang sarili mong picture na gusto mong ilagay doon, so pwede. Okay po. Pero gamitin na lang muna natin to. Next, so description is optional. Isi-save mo to sa My Kahoots. And then, visibility. Kung gusto mo i-public, i-click mo everyone. Kung gusto mo i-private, sa lang. Okay po. Unlisted naman. Pag sinabing unlisted, pag isi-share mo to sa ibang tao, sila lang yung makakakita nito. And kung gusto mo may nag-play ng YouTube video, o pwede, dito mo lang ilalagay yung link. And then yung music, yung kaninang naririnig nyo, yung background music, eto. Pwedeng si Kahoot na yung mamimili or pwedeng kayo mismo yung mamili. And then let's click done. Ngayon. So dito, kung mapapansin nyo, meron na kagad siyang free template na una. Okay. And then, dito natin ilalagay yung question. So, number one, uh, so this is the first question. For example, how many legs does a butterfly have? Kung mapapansin nyo dito, may time limit. Pwede tayo mamili from 5 seconds, 10, 20, hanggang 240 seconds. Depende sa complexity or sa hirap ng tanong natin. Katulad kanina, medyo inedit ko, kaya medyo mabilis yung facing ng tanong. And then yung pointing system, pwedeng 0 points, 1,000 points, or 2,000 points yung uh, pwede mo ibigay sa mga mga katama ng sagot. Yung answer options naman, so pwedeng single select, ibig sabihin isa lang yung sagot, or yung katulad kanina, pwedeng dalawa o mahigit pa yung sagot. Ngayon, dun sa question natin, kung mapapansin nyo kanina, merong picture. So, pwede tayong mamili. Halimbawa, image library. So, dito, kung, nung kinilig ko yung image library, mapapansin nyo, meron na kagad siyang automatic suggested words based from your question. Halimbawa, butterfly. So, ito. Pwede kang mamili dito na image. Or, pwede kang, katulad kanina, pwede kang, kung meron kang image na sarili mo, pwede iyan yung gamitin mo. Or, pwede rin namang video from YouTube. So, dito, meron akong YouTube video. Kakopy ko lang yung link. And then, i-click ko tong YouTube link. Ipipaste ko dito. So, eto yun. So, start from 00 and ng 20 seconds. Kasi 20 seconds lang yung time limit natin dito. So, click natin. Add. And then, answers. So, alimbawa, magbigay tayo yung choices. 2, 4, 6, 8. So, since si Butterfly ay merong 6 uh, legs, so pwede natin i-check tong radio button na to. Ibig sabihin, siya yung tamang sagot. Okay po? Ngayon, so ito ay isang question pa lang. Pag-add tayo ng sumulod na question. So dito, mamimili tayo kung anong type ng question to. So gawin natin is 
Halimbawa, wala tayong maisip or para uh, nabablanko tayo mag-isip. So, pwede tayo humanap ng questions from the question bank. So, ito. May nag-auto-suggest dito. So, halimbawa, ang gusto kong tanong is, what do you call a baby kangaroo? Inaip natin ito. Ito yung mga suggestions. Okay po. So, halimbawa, ito yung gusto natin. I-click natin yung add and then close natin. Automatically, kung mapapansin nyo, nag add siya. Next, so add ulit tayo ng question. For example naman, true or false. So halimbawa, ang question natin, a rhinoceros lives in Africa. A rhinoceros live, lives in Africa, Africa and usually, usually has a war on the end of its toes. So, dito, since true or false to, ano tayo na image, rhinoceros, or pwede namang, para hindi ka agad alam yung sagot, pwede ito. Yung Africa. Medyo matagal. So the correct answer dito is true. Next question. So meron na tayong true or false. Mag-add tayo ng next question, which is an open-ended question naman. Pag sinabing open-ended, so katulad kanina, si user mismo yung magta-type ng sagot. So, pwede itong form of identification. So, for example, what is the name of the reindeer in the Disney animated film program? Okay. So, halimbawa, gusto natin i-upload yung image ng Frozen. So, dito, itatype natin yung sagot, which is, ang pangalan nun is, Ben. So, katulad dito, kapag uh, identification, pwede nating habaan yung time limit. Kasi si user mismo yung magta-type ng sagot. Okay. Next naman is, mag-add tayo ng question for puzzle naman. So, katulad kanina, yung pinagsusunod-sunod nyo. Okay. So, dito, halimbawa, arrange the following according to their feet. Dito, maghanap tayo sa image library ng speed. So, dito, kung mapapansin nyo, yung isa sa, yung ilalagay nyo dito sa answer of one, of four, sunod-sunod na. Kasi isa-shuffle naman to ni Kahoot. Okay, so number one, name. Number two is fish. Number three is human. And number four is tiger. Ayan. Yung ilalagay niyo dito, ulitin ko, yung ilalagay niyo po dito ay dapat sunod-sunod na. Isa-shuffle naman po ito ni Kahoot. Next. So, ngayon naman, na-create na natin itong different types of quiz, we can create a poll. So, since animals ito, let's ask, what animal is the best? So, dito, upload tayo from image library. Okay. Click natin. Select natin to, And then, from there, halimbawa, uh, cat and dog. So, papipiliin natin si user. Ano ba yung tingin nilang best animal? So, pwede naman natin, katulad kanina kay Lazer Lem, pwede yung maging sagot is image. So, pwede tayong mag-search uh, sa, uh, search sa image library. For example, cat. Okay. Click natin to. 
Next naman dito is English Library. And that's it. So, ganun lang kasimple yung gumawa. And after that, so ito yung question bank uli kanina. Itong import slides po is ginagamit, uh, para po siya sa, hindi natin siya ma-access kasi currently premium lang po yung uh, account natin. So, this is for premium slides. Dito naman sa import spreadsheet po, meron kayong uh, XLS na file from Excel po pwede. So, i-click lang natin yun doon. And then, may lalabas dito, yeah, uh, yeah, the Kahoot is ready to be played. So, may choice tayo dito. If you want to test this Kahoot, play now or share with others. So, itry natin tong test this Kahoot. So, dito makikita nyo, may two sides tayo ng screen. Si left side, ito is for the... Uh, the sa ito yung side ni student or ni audience na sila ito yung sasali kanina ito yung nakita niyo kanina and then this one naman sa right side naman ito yung makikita niyo bago kayo or bago niyo i-play yung kahoot niyo so i-zoom in natin so dito ito yung pangalan or title ng kahoot natin which is animals may choice tayo dito kung one is to one or team versus team since obviously one is to one muna tayo kasi distance learning so, pwede nyo i-click to. Aside from that, may mga game options tayo wherein dito nakalagay personalized learning. Okay, sa so personalized learning, dito pag click nyo yung on, may, kung mapapansin nyo, nag-deactivate po or nag, uh, hindi, nyo, hindi na clickable dito si team mode. Ibig sabihin ng personalized learning kasi, yung mga nahirapan, katulad kanina, uh, 7% or 7 out of 14 questions lang kadalasan yung tamang sagot. So, yung mga other seven questions, pwedeng reviewin ngayon uli ni player para mas ma-familiarize siya dun sa mga questions na hindi niya nasagot. Another is friendly nickname generator. So, sa friendly nickname generator, key, si Kahoot na yung pag-a-assign ng name mo. Okay? Para maiwasan natin yung inappropriate nicknames kasi ini-input lang to ni user. Dito naman, eto yung lobby music, yung Tumutunog kanina habang nag-play tayo ng Kahoot. Pwede kayo mag-mamili dyan. Random, uh, randomized order of questions para hindi lagi ito yung number one, ito yung number two. Randomized na order of answers. Show minimized uh, intro instruction. And then dito sa advance, two-step join. Si two-step join, kapag inon nyo to, ginagamit po si two-step join for security and for verification. Okay po, para ma-verify na hindi ka bot or hindi spam yung uh, sumasali sa kahoot natin. And then automatically move through next question. Kasi kanina, kung mapapansin nyo, ako lang yung nag-click ng next. So dito, kapag inon nyo to, automatic after ipakita yung scoreboard, next quest, proceed na kagad siya sa next question. And then rejoin, uh, rejoin after every game. So yun po. And then... Pag-click nyo, halimbawa yung classic, ito, ito uli yung lumabas kanina. May game pin. Okay po. So yung reports kanina, sabi ko nga sa inyo, yung reports kanina, viewable siya, nakasave siya. Nakasave po siya sa, sa, sa account natin or pwede nyo rin siya i-save or pwede nyo siya i-download. Lahat ng, uh, lahat ng nangyari kanina dun sa games, so nakasave, uh, nakasave siya through a report. So, ito po yun. Ito yung mga reports natin. Dito natin siya makikita. Ito. Okay. So, pag in-open natin ito, mapapansin nyo dito, para saan po si report? So, dito makikita ni teacher or ni ni educator na ano ba yung mga nahihirapang question or ano ba yung mga hindi nakuha ng mga students ko? Sino ba yung mga hindi nakatapos? Baka medyo mabilis yung yung time limit ko. So yung mga ganun po. Okay po. So I guess that's it for Kahoot. I hope you learn you learn something useful for your quizzes. 
And if you have any questions, you can reach me through lorraine.tolentino at buso.edu.ph. So now let's welcome Mr. So, so now let's welcome back Mr. Gabriel Galang to continue his presentation. All right, thank you, Miss Lorraine and Sir Limal Salazar. Dun sa napakagandang presentation na pinakita niya sa amin. Okay, sa setup ko lang toilet. Ayan. So for the last topic ng ating webinar series today, uh, take note. Uh, saglit lang to, so stay tuned lang kayo. Okay, we're going to discuss kung paano tayo mag. <coughs> kung paano tayo mag, magkakondakt ng recitation, board activity using whiteboard app and a meeting app. Kasi kung papasin niyo yung mga unang platform na pinakita natin is nakapokus siya sa quizzes and exam. What if gusto natin ng something interactive? Okay? So dito mapopokus ang ating discussion. Okay, <clears throat> okay let, let us go to the next slide. So, paano nga ba natin uh, or paano ba tayo mapag-conduct ng recitation sa board activity? Eh, di ba, ang requirements nun is face-to-face -face sa ating mga sudyante. Okay? So, paano natin gagawin yon? Uh, we can do that using a whiteboard app and a meeting app. Later, meron akong video clip kung uh, papakita ko kung paano ko ginamit yung whiteboard app sa meeting app. But, uh, pero ngayon, explain ko muna kung ano yung dalawang app na sinasabi ko. So, let's start sa meeting app. So when we say meeting app or video meeting application, ito raw yung mga application na kung saan inaallow us na makapag-conduct ng video meeting, conference, or even an online class. Uh, actually, yung gamit natin ngayon, yung Zoom, is an example of video meeting application. So maganda siyang gamitin para makapag-conduct tayo ng klase. And then, ano-ano yung mga example? So meron tayong Google Meet, uh, Google Zoom, I'm sorry, Zoom, Zoom, Zoom only. And then we have the Microsoft Teams. And, at marami pa. Uh, hindi ko na didiscuss si Microsoft team kasi part siya ng Microsoft 365 environment. Hindi natin siya dinaanan. So baka malito lang tayo. Ang ididisk ko ngayon ay si Google Meet dahil si Google Meet is a part ng G Suite uh, applications. So included siya ron. That's why pwede nating mapag-interconnect yung mga applications na naituro nung day one at day two. Okay? And then yung Zoom, Hindi ko na siya i-discuss pero magbibigay lang ako ng sample kung paano ko siya ginamit. So let us start muna kung paano gamitin yung Google Meet. Ah, napakadali lang nito. So napaka-brief lang ng example natin. So let us go to uh, the browser. Take note, if you are using a laptop or a computer, to access Google Meet, you need to go to a browser. But if you are using a mobile device, you need to download the application and install it. Okay. So dito, para makapunta na kay Meet, just type meet.google.com sa ating browser. If you are using a personal Google account like this, ito yung makikita nyo. Pero kapag ang gamit nyo is an educational account, like yung isang account ko na to, again, meet.google.com, ito yung interface na makikita natin. Ayan, wait lang natin. Ayan, yung interface na makikita natin. Take note, dalawa lang, uh, magkamukha lang halos yung pinapakita natin sa dalawa na yan. So yung button na to is just the same as this button. Okay. Ang i-demonstrate ko is yung sa educational version. Don't worry, pareho lang naman sila halos. Okay. So to start a meet, uh, meeting or a meet or an online class, okay, just click the join or start a meeting. And then magtatanong siya, ano wrong nickname? So, Sir Gabs. Ilagyan ko ng ganyan. Then I'll click continue. That, mag, uh, gagana na to pero meron lang kong settings na babaguhin kung papansin ninyo yung camera mag error ah. okay bakit mag error yung camera so ito turn off ko muna yung camera ko sa zoom so I'll turn this up and then hopefully gumana na ayan gumana na yung camera natin dito sa meet okay now to join or to to be included in the meeting, you just click join now. 
Of course, since ako yung nag-create ng room natin, okay, ako pa lang yung nandito sa loob. Also, kapag nag-join ka, lalabas dito yung uh, passcode or code. Lalabas dito yung information ng room natin. So, sino lang merong information to sila lang makakasali. So, kung makakabot kayo, pwede kayong sumali. Pero, i-close ko na siya kasi saglit ko na siya in the demonstrate. So, I'll close this. Then, para makasali, gagamitin ko yung isa kong browser. Ito. I'll paste the link right here sa, ano, sa taas. Or, I'll just copy the, the code. So, ito yung code. So, I'll paste this. And then, ayan. Take note, dalawa gamit ko, ha. So, Ida-drag ko siya sa kanan. And then, ito si Ayan. So, ito yung uh, room or yung uh, tama, yung room ng creator and then ito yung room ng uh, nag-join. Then, dito, kapag pumasok, uh, kapag gusto mong pumasok, you to ask muna. So, pag clinic ko to, gusto ko rin ba? Then, may magpa-pop up dito sa teacher side na may gustong sumali. So wait lang natin, medyo naglo-load lang ng konti kasi naka-stream tayo plus naka-zoom tayo plus nagmi-meet tayo. Okay? So dito ayan, lumabas na yung ano, someone wants to join the meeting. Then you can deny his entry or you can admit uh, him or her inside the room. So if I click admit, click admit, aha. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I will be automatically will be automatically uh, included dun sa loob ng meeting. Uh, okay. dun sa loob. Ayan, may mga sumasali pa. Hello po, ma'am. Ayan. Ayan so again, po, ma ganun gamitin so si again, Google Meet. Magpo-focus muna ako Google dito Meet. sa... Magpo-focus muna Sorry, ako dito sa... Sorry, nakabukas kasi speaker ko. Magpo-focus muna ako dito sa teacher side. Okay. Explain ko lang yung mga features na makikita natin. Okay. Dito, pwede tayong... Uh, pwede nating i-view yung mga nasa loob ng meeting natin or room na tinatawag natin. So, pag clinic ko yun, tatlo kami nandito. Okay. Kung papansin ninyo, naka-mute yung mic by default, pero pwede nilang yan mute yun anytime they like. Okay. And then dito, pwede tayong mag-chat, kunyari, inside the room. So, pwede yun. Alright. And then, you can invite also people here by just clicking add people. Then, you can uh, just input the email address. Yun yun sa part na yun. And in here, kung nakikita nyo, meron percent now. So, ano ginagawa ng percent now? Ayan, admit din natin si Sir Edinel. So, when we say percent now, you are actually sharing or you want to share your screen dun sa ibang members natin. So, hello, Sir. Ayan, nasa bahay pa si Sir. Okay. So, I'll, pres I'll give you an example on how to present. So, I'll click percent now. And then you have an option. You can present on your entire screen, just a window or a Chrome tab. So I'll present using my, my entire screen, then I'll share. Ngayon, kung napansin nyo, nakashare na raw to. So lahat ng nakikita ko dito, yun na rin yung makikita ng mga participants. Oh, not yet pala. Nag-load pa. Okay? Ayan, once na nakita na nila to, yan din yung makikita nila. So let us say, magtuturo tayo ng lesson. O, kanyari, nagpunta ako dito, then magbubukas ako kanyari ng uh, PowerPoint application. So let us say, let us say, I'll click this. Uh -huh. Naglo-load lang ng konti. Ayan. And then, let us say, niran ko siya, kung ano yung nasa screen ko, iyon yung makikita nung mga nakakonect sa akin dun sa room or sa meet. Also, yung sinasabi ko, maririnig nila at the same time. Okay. So, hindi lang sa online classroom, pwede nyo rin ito i-conduct sa meeting or any conferences. So, ganun kadali at ganun kagandang gamitin si uh, Google Meet. Aside from that, uh, let me close this. Ayan. Balik tayo sa ating... Uh, huh? uh, naligaw ako. Ayan. Balik tayo rito. You can actually record your class. Let us say may nagsabi student... Sir, hindi po ako makakatend today. Uh, so then you can say that, don't worry, I'll record the class. So you can upload it on YouTube or you can upload it to the drive so they can watch it later. So how to record? So if you click this option, there's an option for recording the meeting. At uh, please do note that yung record meeting is only available dun sa account na 
naka-register only sa school or educational version. So kung wala tayong educational version, hindi pa siya magiging present. Okay. Pero don't worry, bago ko kana to, stop ko na yung ating meet. So ito yung nagagawa ng meet. Okay. Kung papansin niyo, ayan may mahabol pa. Kung papansin niyo, napaka-simpleng gamitin, di ba? Napakadali at napaka-user friendly na ng meet. Okay. So I'll end the meeting po dito. So yung mga sumali, thank you very much dito sa meeting. I'll close the tab para mag-end yung meeting. Okay, then I'll continue with my presentation. Aha, balik tayo dito. So dito, si Google Meet, uh, meron lang siyang, hindi naman siya disadvantage, meron siyang limitation. Pero don't worry, meron akong sasabihin about the limitation. So una, kay Google Meet, uh, hindi ka makapag-raise ng hand. Let us say your student want to raise their hand, you can't do that on Meet. And then the creator or the host of the meeting cannot actually control totally the meeting. Pero don't worry, kasi may nabasa akong uh, chismis, chismis pa tawag dito. So may nabasa akong rumor, ayan, nagrab ko siya sa Infuse Classroom blog, na in the upcoming months, magkakaroon ng new features ng Google Meet, such as magkaka, or may kukonek na raw natin yung digital whiteboard, which is ito yung didiscuss ko later, dun sa Google Meet. And then, magkakaroon siya ng features para sa breakout room. So, pwede ka mag-separate ng small group of uh, participants sa meeting. Then, eto maganda, magkakaroon na siya ng moderation control. So, si teacher, pwede na niyang kontrolin ngayon lahat, nung nasa, lahat ng participant dun sa Google Meet natin. Then, yung number four, magkakaroon na rin siya ng background blur or mare-replace yung background. So, let us say, gusto mo private yung nasa likod mo, nasa bahay ka lang, pwede mo i-activate yung background blur. And then, eto, pwede mo itong gamitin sa recitation. You can raise your hand in a meeting. And then lastly, pwede ka mag-add ng poll. Pero again, uh, rumor pa lang ito, hintayin natin, pero uh, ina-expect ko ay uh, ma-implement to sa Google Meet. Okay. And then, for the Zoom, magbipakita ako later ng example kung paano ko ginamit si Zoom. Uh, by the way, ginagamit ko alternately si Zoom sa kasi Meet. Depende dun sa pangangailangan ko. Okay. So, I'll demonstrate later si Zoom sa isang video clip. Now, let us proceed muna sa whiteboard app. Na-discuss na natin ng meeting app. Ano naman ang whiteboard app? So, meron mga subjects na mahirap ituro kung wala tayong whiteboard. Okay. Lalo na yung mga kailangan i-explain yan. So, uh, may papakita ang image na grab ko siya sa Facebook. Hindi ko siya papakita para pagtawanan, but rather to set an inspiration. So ito si ma'am, kudos kay ma'am. Uh, nung hindi ko pa alam yung whiteboard app, ganito yung plano ko kung paano ko i-discuss yung lesson ko. So, since na-discover ko yung whiteboard app, uh, malilesen na or mababawasan na yung pagkahasil ko. Pero again, uh, kudos kay ma'am sa pagtuturo niya ng online. Okay. So, what is a whiteboard app? A whiteboard app or an online whiteboard Uh, ito rin yung mga application na, na pwedeng mag-simulate ng whiteboard digitally. Okay? So, magkakaroon tayo ng whiteboard sa, sa screen habang nagdi-discuss tayo. Parang ganon. So, napakaraming available na whiteboard app. Okay? Andiyan, syempre, yung Microsoft whiteboard. Hindi rin siya natin gagamitin kasi mas maganda siyang gamitin kapag nasa 365 environment ka. Then, we have the Zoom. So, si Zoom ay whiteboard pero hindi ko siya suggested or hindi ko lang alam kung nakakontrol kasi pwedeng magsulat anyone dun sa whiteboard. Siyempre, ayaw natin mangyari yon And then dito, ito yung mga online whiteboard na available. So we have the Miro and Zightboard. Napakaganda ng dalawa na to Ang problem lang dito ay uh, you need to pay. Kasi para magamit sila mabuti, kailangan premium. Then I drew is a totally free whiteboard but very uh, limited yung kanyang graphics. Hindi siya ganun ka-updated. At yung pinaka-the best na free, totally free online whiteboard is the concept board. Papakita ko siya mamaya. Okay. And then yung pinaka-focus na whiteboard natin is what we call the Google Google sorry, Google sorry, Jamboard application. Uh, take note na si Google Jamboard is an interactive whiteboard na dinidevelop ng Google. Uh, part din siya ng G Suite application. So kung hindi nyo napapansin, nandun din siya. Pero uh, yung Google Jamboard originally is a device na ginawa ni Google tapos, ito yung application sa loob. Pero ang maganda rito, pinort niya sa app at sa 
online sa web-based yung application para magamit ng walang device na ganito. So may papakita akong video kung paano ko present yung or kung paano ko nag-conduct ng recitation, ng board activity using a meeting application and a whiteboard. Uh, medyo lagi lang to, don't worry, i-explain ko naman lahat na makikita natin. Okay? Yan, hina ko lang sounds. Kasi magbo-voice over ako. Ah, nawala asan ba? Ayan. Ulitin natin. Nag-play siya rito. Mag-isa. Nakikita ba? Yan. So, uh, ito ay isang uh, online class na pinerform ko sa aking mga students. So, napaka-pupogi ng mga sudyante ko rito. So, paano daw ako nag-conduct ng class discussion using Zoom? So, yung, tulad ng pinakita ko sa Meet, Nag-create ako ng room sa Zoom or meeting. In-invite ko sila. I-present ko ang screen ko. Then using my slide, eto, diniscuss ko sa kanila isa-isa. Just like kung paano ang ginagawa ko sa isang face-to-face -face na uh, classroom. And then, paano ako nagpa-class recitation? Ayan. So, Using the feature of Zoom na raise hand, magtataas sila ng kamay, okay? Uh, ginamit ko yon na opportunity para makapagparecitation. So what you can do is to present your questions dito sa, sa Zoom or sa meeting app. And then when they're going to answer, Uh, they just need to raise their hand. So, syempre, makikita mo kung sino yung unang nagtasa kami kung nakabantay ka. So, for example, dito, manual kung sinulat yung question dito sa paper. Pinapakita ko lang sa camera. Pero again, pwede nyo gamitan ng slide. Okay? So, ayan. So, ito, for example, nagpakita ko ng question. And then, dito, sa bandang part na to, makita natin, ayan, pinost ko. Nag-raise ng hand yung isa kong student na si Mario Damian. So, siya yung nauna ko nakita. May isa pang nag-raise, of course, si Michael Termulo. Pero syempre, kung sino yung nauna, siya yung sasagot. And then, binigay niya yung answer. Then, saka ako i-record ngayon yung, uh, yung sagot niya kasi tama. Okay. And then, paano ako nagsagawa ng class discussion using an interactive whiteboard Example, Jamboard and Zoom. Okay. So, ito na, may kailangan kasi ako explain sa whiteboard. So, paano mag-explain? Uh, take note muna na mas magagamit nyo na mabuti itong, uh, itong technology na to kapag meron kayong mobile devices. Kasi mas user-friendly yung, uh, yung mga whiteboard application kapag touch yung ating device na gagamitin. So, siguro naman, maski sudyante natin, meron na rin mga cellphone ngayon. Okay, so let us continue. So, may naman nang i-explain ko. So, dito, binuksan ko yung so, Google Jamboard. Uh, to be exact, this is a mobile version, yung pinahit ako. And then, what I did, habang nasa loob ako ng conference or meeting namin, ng class namin, in-invite ko sila dun sa whiteboard. Ayan, in-invite ko sila nasa ilalim. So, dito, papakita ko rin sa web version na in-invite ko sila. So, lahat na yan ay nandito sa whiteboard. Lahat ng babaguhin ko sa whiteboard, makikita nila. Okay. Once na na-invite sila sa whiteboard, uh, pwede nilang buksan yung whiteboard nila, then lahat ng changes na babaguhin ko, mababago sa whiteboard nila. Okay. So, dito, for example, ayan, nagturo ako ng basic networking. So, ayan. So, lahat na nababago rito, nakikita ng student. Ayan. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, hanggang 2, 5, 4. And then next, paano ako nagpa-board activity? Pinapunta ko ba student ko rin sa bahay namin? Siyempre, hindi. So since nakakonect sila sa whiteboard ko, I can grant them an access para makapag-edit dun sa whiteboard. Pag nakapag-edit na sila sa whiteboard, uh, magre-reflect yun dito sa ating uh, pinapakita. For example, ito, lumipat ako sa page 2 ng whiteboard. Nag-prepare na ako ng questions. And then using Zoom, nagtanong ako kung sino gusto sumagot. So dito sumagot si Termulo. Termulo. So gagawin ko is access dun sa whiteboard. Ayan. Para makapagsulat. Uh, 
take note din na first time nilang ginamit yung whiteboard. So, medyo nangangapa pa sila. Meron lang konting, konting learning curve. Pero don't worry, matatalino ang mga bata ngayon. Uh, kaya nilang mag-adjust. Okay. So, dito, may papakita lang uh, example. Dito, from viewer, ibig sabihin, nanunood lang sila sa whiteboard. Pwede ko silang gawing editor. Once na editor na sila, they can control the, or they can use tools to do something on your whiteboard. So, for example, nag pina na pa ako. Again, first time lang nila rito. Kaya medyo nangangapa pa sila. Ayan. Ayan. So, ayan. So, dito, sinadjust ko na instead isulat nila since nangangapa pa sila, gumamit sila ng text tool. Okay. So, si Jamboard, meron siyang text tool which is the sticky note. Okay. Uh, ang mas mag, ang eto pala disadvantage si Jamboard, wala siyang text tool na totoo. Oh, ang gamit sa kanya ay na naka-sticky note. Eh what if gusto kong mahaba 'yung susulat? Ko. Oh, Iyon naman ang magiging adi concept board mamaya. Sa so, ipapakita ko. Ayun. So, nakapag board activity kami nang hindi kami nag-face to face. Okay, so I'll, I'll close the video. So ngayon, ipapakita ko lang kung si si Jack, hindi ko na siya ituturo kung paano siya gamitin kasi very straightforward kung paano siya uh, magagamit. So since part siya ng G Suite family na of application, of course, you can access it online. So what I'm going to do is to type Jamboard. Uh, sorry, mag-change lang ako ng account. Ibang account pala ang aking gamit. Ayan, ito, ito pala sa kabilang kabilang, ayan. Ay, nandito pa rin pala si ma'am sa meeting. Hello, ma'am. Toklos ko na po. Ayan. So, what we're going to do is to go to jamboard.google.com. Ayan. So, ito yung interface si Jamboard. By the way, uh, pag nag-create ka ng Jamboard, automatic din magka-create ka ng board doon sa drive mo kasi interconnected sila. As far as I know, pwede mo na rin siya i-connect kay Google Classroom. Okay? So dito wala pa tayong jam, yun yung tawag niya sa board. So what we're going to do is to click the plus button sa lower right and then magki-create siya ngayon ng tinatawag nating jam or the whiteboard. Ayan, so this is the whiteboard. Dito pwede tayong gumawa ng multiple page, pwede ka na mag-prepare ng uh, instructions dito, then i-discuss mo na lang, pwede yun. Sa kaliwa yung tools, of course, so yun nandiyan yung mga basic tools, we have the pen, let us say, sulat tayo, ayan. We have the eraser, uh, the select tools, then paglagay ng sticky notes, gusto nyo maglagay ng image, or kung gusto nyo highlighter. So for example, ayan, may discuss ko, then ito, ayan. Ngayon, ang papakita ko lang dito kay Jamboard, yung pinaka-importante na matutunan nyo kay Jamboard is paano nyo siya ishe-share sa, sa student nyo. So again, tulad na ibang G Suite application, just click the share button. By default, Uh, naka-private ang ating board pero once na shinare mo siya magiging public siya also please do note that sa ilalim kapag yung link hindi mo mababago yung options ng student from viewer to editor so kung gusto mong pa-activity make sure na you will invite him or her using their uh, gmail account or google account so dito imbitahin ko yung isa kong account so ayan yung pusa Ayan. Then dito, bago ko isend yung invite, I'll change the access from editor to viewer kasi ayaw ko pa siyang pagsulatin. So when I click send, marireceive niya yun sa email. So ang gagawin ko, bubuksan ko na lang yun. So ito yung pusang, pusang account natin. Nag-close ba isa? Pag-close ko na yung bulls account. Ayan. And dito, ang gagawin ko lang is pupunta tayo sa Jamboard again. A perspective student, ha? So, kunyari, student to. Nung pagpunta ko sa Jamboard, wala naman create or wala naman akong create na board, but meron dito? Kaya nagkaroon ng board dyan kasi in-invite tayo ni teacher. So, uh, what I'm going to do is to join dun sa board ni teacher. Ayan. So, ang gagawin ko, imumove ko siya sa right side para makita niyo yung side-by-side -side comparison. Ayan. So, ito yung Jamboard ni teacher. Ito yung Jamboard ni student. Okay. Kung papansin niyo si student, walang tools. 
kasi nga ginawa lang natin siyang editor. So, pag nagsulat ako rito, of course, uh, ma-update siya dapat dito. So, meron lang konting delay. Okay. Let us say, gusto natin granta ng access si student. Okay. So, what are we going to do? So, we're just going to click, or sorry, click the share button. De, ayan. And then, makita nyo rito yung members nung board nyo. So, ito yung student ko, yung pusa. From viewer, gagawin ko siyang editor. Then, I'll save this. Once na naging editor na siya, okay, si etong viewer natin or si student natin, kapag ang gamit niya ay web app, uh, kailangan niyo munang i-refresh yung board niya. Pero kapag ang gamit niya ay uh, mobile device, automatically na yung magre-respect. Ay, magre-refresh. Magre magre so kung papansin ni Grinantan natin, natin siya na access, nagkaroon na siya ng tool. So si student, pwede na rin magsulat. Then, magre-reflect din yung changes dito sa board ni teacher. Okay. So, ganun kagandang gamitin ang Jamboard. And then, for the last demonstration, so mga two minutes lang to, okay, i-introduce ko sa inyo yung online na whiteboard, which is si concept board. So, what we're going to do is to, to type concept board. Uh, sir, ba't mo papakita to? Kasi may mga nagagawa siya na hindi kaya gawin ni Jamboard. So, pagpunta nyo kay concept board, syempre mag-register lang kayo. Uh, click nyo lang or use your Google account, pwede na yun. But ako, I'll just click the login para magamit kay concept board ko. So, once na nalagin ako, uh, wait lang natin, medyo naglo-load lang siya. Okay? I can create a new board. So, pag nag-create ako ng new, new board, tulad kanina sa Jumbo, blank whiteboard. Ayan. So, loading lang ng konti. Ayan. So kung papansin niyo very familiar yung interface ni Jamboard kay Concept Board. So meron siyang drag, then meron din siyang select tool, the erase tool, the the pen tool, the highlight, etc., the shape, the text, and etc. So ito pala ang advantage ni uh, ni Concept Board. Pwede, so I can say hello. Ayan. Yung kanina kailangan mo maging clad ng Sticky notes. So, asam sticky notes. So, ganito yung tura nung kanina. Ayan. So, hello. Eh, di ba? Ayaw mo naman minsan yung may background. Minsan gusto mo lang text na mahaba. Pwede mong baguhin din yung mga font niya na tiba pang text setting. So, again, ito yung isang suggestion as alternative kay Jamboard. So, last, ang ipapakita ko, paano isi-share to sa student? Again, pwede mong isi-share to sa student. So, just click the share button. Then, add a nickname dun sa ating whiteboard, sa labay natin, my board. And then, I'll save the name. And then, in here, after not i-save, na-save ko ba? Parang ayaw ma-save. Meron na ata existing whiteboard. Ayan, na-save na. And then, dito, lalabas yung invite natin. Okay. So, dito, sa ilalim, pwede natin invite yung student natin via email address. Pero dito, sa bandang upper part, nakita nyo yung button na to? Ito, ito. Pag clinic ko to, makakapi yung link, then pwede mo i-share sa student. Ako ay prefer dito ang nasa taas. Okay? Pero bago mo i-share sa student, make sure daw that you will change the access. So pwede, kang, pwede mong gawing editor or reader. Para lang siya kaninang editor or viewer. Aside from copying the link, we can also uh, use the QR code. So, for example, ito yung QR code. So, when I click this, lalabas yung QR code. So, let us give an example kung paano gamitin yung may QR code. Okay, so, nakakonect yung cellphone ko rito. And then, ayan, we will use QR code. So, meron lang lumabas na ano. So, si student, uh, using a QR, QR, code, uh, QR code app, then, uh, I-detect niya ngayon yung QR code. Babasahin lang niya ng konti. Wait lang. Ayan. And then, lalabas na yung link. Ang gagawin lang ni student, i-click lang niya yung link na to. So, I'll click this. And then, I'll be re redirected dun sa board ni teacher. Ayan. Ang maganda rito, hindi required si student na mag-create ng account. Kung papansin niyo may option siya to sign in or to sign in as a guest. So dito gagawin uh, natin yung guest. So when I click the guest option, okay, 
Then I'll I'll need to put a name. Kailangan meron kang nickname or name. Hindi ko na babaguhin, Gab Mobile. Then I'll access as guest. And then makikita ko na ngayon yung board ni teacher. Okay. Kung papansin niyo wala siyang tools na available. 'Di ba kanina may tools si teacher? Bakit wala siyang tools? Kasi yung access lang niya is just uh, what you call this viewer. Kung gusto mo siyang bigyan ng access, just click this yung plus one na to. Dito nalilis yung mga users na included. Click the student access role, change it from reader to editor. Yan. Once na bago mo, mapapansin natin biglang nagkaroon ng tools dito. No need for, ayan may nagjo-join na. So, kung papansin natin, pwede na ngayon makapagsulat si teacher. So, ay si student. Hello po. Ayan. So, hopefully, dito ko tatapusin ang aking presentation at yung aming series ng webinar today. Okay. Hindi, hindi pala yung series. Yung webinar natin today. So, ayan, nagjo-join. I'll close na po kasi, I guess, overtime tayo. Pero hopefully, naintindihan natin. Hopefully, naintindihan natin yung mga lessons na tinuro namin. Okay. So, for tomorrow's Uh, uh, webinar, abangan natin si Mr. Lester Phil Cruz. Okay. Uh, ang ituturo niya is yung topic about setting up your interactive classroom uh, and classroom netiquettes. So that is tomorrow, June 18, Thursday, 2 p.m. to 4 p.m. Of course, I am your speaker, Gabriel M. Galang. You can send me your question sa aking email address So, sir.gabriel.galang at gmail.com. Of course, you can also subscribe on my YouTube, YouTube channel. So, ayan yung link. Uh, Mag-upload ako dyan ng iba pang tutorial. And nakalimutan daw ni Sir Lemuel na mag, uh, magpakilala kanina. So, si Sir Lemuel Salazar, you can uh, email him at johnlemuel.salazar.gmail.com. You can follow him on the Instagram, sir underscore chef underscore lem. And also, yung Facebook niya, ayan yung, yung link. Okay. Uh, just a reminder ulit bago tayo mag-end yung video na to ay naka-record or yung web webinar natin naka-record and will automatically be uploaded dun sa YouTube channel ng Bulso CICT so kung may meron kayo na miss pwede nyo balikan and please subscribe and ring the bell button again subscribe to our channel kasi marami pa kaming gagawin katulad nito na makakatulong sa inyo once again thank you sa pakikinig Uh, thank you. See you tomorrow.